person with us as well as those of you guys who are online with us. Uh, we do a broadcast every Tuesday and Thursday and uh, we are live tonight so excited to be joining all of these fantastic people and if you would like to be some of the fantastic people that are joining us tonight I'll just do a quick scan of the audience if you guys could just wave when you see yourself on camera yes that's you guys yeah fantastic uh, so it's just gonna scan the room uh, so this is just to uh, invite those who are online watching uh, just to let us know hey there's a lot of things that can happen a little magic that can happen when we're all in person together and it's a great opportunity to be able to uh, share knowledge uh, share advice and really just kind of be around the energy that is uh, that of a real estate investor you guys can wave on the other side too it's like it's like if, if we're doing a wave competition like you guys are out it's like I'm, I'm going with these guys uh, but uh, excited to be here with you all tonight excited to be sharing uh, some uh, great information when it comes to real estate investing so uh, part of what we do every single uh, week that we're together is we share tribal knowledge and we're gonna go through a tribal knowledge presentation today um, that I think you guys will love we'll also go through a market update today uh, just to show you what the performance has been uh, over the last month and what the forecast is going forward so excited to be able to share that with you so our tip of the week for those of you guys who are joining us And I just want to say thank you so much to whoever created that super dramatic tip of the week uh, music. So uh, just uh, makes it that much more fun. So every week we do a tip of the week and uh, share something that we've learned in our business and share something we're actively uh, doing in our business. And if you'd like to join us at a live meeting for those of you guys who are online, you can go to texasrias.com slash live and join some of the fantastic people that are here with us tonight. So uh, we wanna make sure you all know how to grow your business. So every week we do a different tip. If you wanna know some of the prior tips that we've done, uh, I'll just ask you to either check out our YouTube channel or check out our podcast. Um, and you can watch us on uh, Facebook and so many other places as well, but that seems to be the f uh, place that most people go. And one of the things that we wanna talk ab about tonight is high-end deals in uncertain markets high-end deals in uncertain markets. So I'll tell you, I was talking to uh, a newer investor today, and one of the things that they said is, you know, Shanoa, the strategy that I'm looking at doing is, I just wanna do fewer deals, I just wanna do, you know, higher-end deals. Um, I have this eye for design, right? And I, you know, I live in a high-end home, and I, instead of doing, you know, 10, 100,000, or, you know, that's, you know, $300,000 deals, I want to do just a few multi-million dollar homes. What do you think about that strategy? Same, same, same effort, more money, right? It sounds, it sounds exactly right, right? And I think that's what they're thinking. But what's the truth behind this? What's the truth behind this? Would you guys like to know a little bit of the truth behind this? Uh, so the truth is uh, high end, that is where the big money is for sure. High end, you can be making hundreds, a hundred or hundreds of thousands of dollars on your deal, okay? So just think on a million dollar deal using that same 10 to 15% of ARV in terms of your profit using that formula, you're making 100 to $150,000, right? Depending on your cost of capital. Uh, $200,000 deal, you're making 200,000 to $300,000 on your deal, right? Does this sound a little bit better than doing a you know, Jonathan, a, a $200,000 deal, right? Making twenty dollars to uh, $30,000, the answer is yes. Uh, and uh, on these big houses, you know, you can make a lot of money. And you're only dealing with one set of permits, one set of plan, one set of contractors, hopefully one set of issues, right? Uh, and only one set of sellers and only one set of buyers, right? As opposed to when you're doing multiple houses and the you know, low hundreds range, then you're, it's, it's a lot more, there's a lot more work to do, right? Uh, when you're marketing it, you know, you're marketing one property, you're putting all of your effort in it. So I think, you know, it, it sounds good. And as Ed said, it takes about the same amount of time, you know, to sell these houses. Now, typically when you're doing one of these houses, they take a little bit longer to build, right? So there's more to build. Uh, but not longer than what it would, might take two houses to be able to go through as a real estate investor. 
and and the funding is the funding as long as you have a, a great deal, the funding's going to come uh, no matter what no matter what the price of the deal is. Uh, now I will tell you that in uh, uncertain markets, which I, do you guys is it just me or are, are, are am I in company here thinking that we're in a little bit of an uncertain time right now? See my feeling that way? You're seeing interest rates rise. You know, hearing a bunch of uh, news about uh, um, uh, the economy. You know that that the Fed chairman's in rising interest rate and raising interest rates uh, might accidentally send the economy into a recession. I don't know. I don't know if you guys are following the news there, but it's, uh, a, it's a little bit kind of scary, right? It's uncertain times. Um, we're we're dealing with maybe a war. You know, uh, we're dealing with the supply chain issues from that war. Uh, we're dealing with higher gas prices. Uh, we're dealing with people who have lost anywhere from you know 20 to 60 percent of their investments over the last six months, right? As we've seen some uh, indexes uh, crash. And and here's what I'll tell you about high end during uncertain markets: the months of inventory uh, can double overnight. So basically, what that looks like is, hey. Uh, you're not the only one who thought to themselves, let's just do these multi-million dollar deals, right? There are, there's more than just you out there. Uh, so, so what you'll see is some of these will all come online at the same time. And as that inventory doubles, uh, and if the market comes to a, a screeching halt, and we're seeing some uh, significant slowdown in the market right now in terms of the number of sales, and I'll share that with you as we do the market update in a little while. Uh, but what you'll notice is that your holding time can double. And when your holding time is doubling, what, what is that reducing? That would be your profits. That would be your profits, right? If every day you're holding that house, that house may be costing you several hundreds of dollars every single day that you uh, hold that house. Uh, and then when I say months of inventory, just to kind of give you guys some um, idea of what this looks like, is uh, right now months of inventory in Texas around two months of inventory. Historical months of inventory, what is a, a stable market or a market equilibrium, somewhere around six months supply of inventory. So we have very little inventory right now, but the inventory has been growing significantly. In fact, in some markets uh, around Texas, we're seeing like a 50% growth in the amount of inventory. And in uh, other markets, we've seen like a 200% growth in the amount of inventory. Now that gets them up to a two month supply of inventory, which sounds like, okay, well that's still doable. But the truth is that as you, what, you know, it's like it, it happens gradually and then all of a sudden, and then it's, you can't get out of some of these high end deals fast enough is, is what you can uh, be aware of. In fact, um, I, uh, uh, a high end deal that we did in 2006, the market, some of you guys might remember 2007, 2008, just basically grinded to a complete halt. And in some of these million dollar price sectors, we saw months of inventory go from a few months of inventory to 36 months of inventory. 36 months of inventory. Can you imagine holding on to a multi-million dollar house for 36 months? How's that gonna work out for you? How's that gonna work out for your profits? It's not, is your lender even gonna hang on with you for 36 months waiting for you to sell that property? No, what's your lender gonna do? What did a lot of lenders do in 2008, nine and 10? They foreclosed, right? So uh, just be aware that, um, um, that 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 happens, and, it, and it's like it's it almost feels like oh it's like oh it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine so it's like fell off a cliff. So gradually, and then all of a sudden, sometimes these things hit you, and uh, and I will tell you this, uh, and I'll, I'll I, I walk through so many houses um, when the market is undersupplied, anything and everything sells. When the market is undersupplied, anything and everything sells. When the market is oversupplied, the cream rises to the top. And some of the crappy or shoddy or, you know, oh, you know, the contractor kind of got away with this, they're looking at everything. Why? Because they can, because they have options and because they have time. So what I will say is uh, when we are in uncertainty, right, uh, or recessionary times, or a housing market decline, th I will tell you uh, this, this, um, this truth, and that is that the high-end properties drop the hardest, 
and they drop first. So they're typically the last part of the market segment to go up when the market goes up, but they're typically the first part of the market segment to go down when the market goes down. That's just the law of real estate and real estate, um, um, that is law of real estate. Um, condos are also what we call the canary in the coal mine. Condos are typically the last segment or last asset class to go up when the market goes up, but the first asset class to go down when the market starts to go down. So those are the ones, those are the numbers that you'll want to uh, look for. Now, months of inventory, where can you find that uh, piece of data? Your realtor will give you that months of inventory. Now, here's what I see a lot of people get confused on, and, and, and now more than ever, this is a confusing market, is what they'll do is they, for a lot of brand new investors, they don't understand the concept of months of inventory, but they understand the cousin of months of inventory, which is what? Days on market. So they'll look at days on market and they'll say, oh, well, for all of these properties that sold, they were only on the market for 30 days. That sounds really good. I'm going to make a lot of money if I sell this property in 30 days. You could have 30 days as your days on market and you could have six months as your months of inventory. Do you understand that? Remember that days on market, that's how long a property is, is on the market for the lucky ones that actually make it to the finish line and sell. Months of inventory represents all of the sellers that are out there, including the ones that will ultimately expire or get withdrawn. You guys kind of understanding this, this, this difference right here? So don't just look at days on market. Days on market when months of inventory is going up will throw you off and cause you to make maybe not the best decision in terms of understanding your numbers, in terms of understanding your holding time. So uh, I wanna make sure you're aware of this. Now, uh, let's talk about what we've gone through over the uh, first uh, six months of 2022. Uh, 2020, you know, we dealt with some stuff, right? We came out on top. 2021, man, that was like the best year real estate had ever seen. 2022, the first six months looks like a bear market. Bitcoin down 59%, the NASDAQ down uh, 29%, the Dow down 15%. How many of you guys felt that in your savings? How many of you guys felt that in your 401ks, right? Uh, and then have we seen an inflationary market? Price of gas, right? I, you know, even if you don't have a 401k, I know you're feeling the price of gas, right? There's no one in here who's not feeling that, right? Uh, food and commodities and restaurant bills. Uh, we were just got back from a vacation and you know we were talking on the way here tonight. I was like, did you notice like how expensive everything was while we were on vacation? I thought we were going to Mexico. We went to the Cabo part of Mexico, which is probably like a translation for Cabo is like the most expensive place you can go in Mexico. I don't know if you've ever looked up that translation. I think that's pretty much what it is. That's a joke. You can laugh. Uh, until you get the bill and then you can cry. Uh, so, so food's gone up, uh, the cost of other commodities have gone up, so we've been seeing that. So at the same time, we feel less rich, right? Because our stock portfolios have gone down, but we're paying more for everything right now, so it's kind of a double punch. Uh, job, marketers, some, job market, some employees, uh, employers are starting to fire and shutting off their hiring as well. And then the consumer sentiment, right? So. Uh, and, and it's often measured as a consumer confidence ratio. So I think right now it's around 100, but I think it topped out around 130 earlier this year before we went into that bear market. So I feel less wealthy and things are costing more. Is that kind of how maybe you feel right now? So this contributes to this uncertain time. Uh, and then does, when, you, when you feel uncertain, does that lead to dramatic action? Or does that lead to a, hey, let's kind of wait and see what happens here for a little while? Which one, one or two? Two. Yeah, I wanna kinda like, I'm just gonna sit back for a little while, see what happens, right? So a lot of times people will say, let's hold off on buying a new house or let's hold off on upgrading that house until my stocks rebound or until I've saved more money and or the interest rates go back down. I know we have some realtors in the room. Are any of you guys working with buyers right now? Have any of those buyers said, oh, maybe we pull back right now. And as, and as a realtor, you're like, 
Are you kidding me? This is the only time that you can buy a house without making multiple offers above list price the same day it's listed even before you even saw it, right? That's what you need to be saying. And then the other part of what you need to be saying is, and by the way, they're about to in increase interest rates again, so you better go, now is good. Let's go lock it now. But then they're uncertain. So that kind of says, I'm just gonna hold back and look. Translation, waste your time for another couple of months until they, you know, just like a lot of the buyers did last year. It's like, oh, I don't know if I wanna make an offer. And it's like, well, that's okay. Eight other people already did and it went $50,000 up over, over list price while you were thinking about it, right? Uh, so the same thing's gonna happen, just a little different order. The benefit now is you don't have to pay $50,000 over list price. Now you will have to pay uh, more for an interest rate, but those things kind of work out if you're not paying this much, but your interest, if you're paying, going from paying this much to paying this much, even when your interest rate goes from here to here, right? Uh, so sometimes we have to kind of walk our clients through these different uh, situations. But that sentiment is real, and the sentiment is showing up in the market report, which is the numbers I'm going to show you in a little while. So as you guys are thinking about the high end, I uh, want to make sure you know uh, uh, some, of the, some of the things that you know, I, want, I want you guys to consider, which is uh, on some of these multi-million dollar homes, these are not the homes that finish in six months, seven months, right? Uh, these are homes that sometimes take 12 months, and in some markets will take up to 18 months, depending on uh, how long it takes to get permits, depending on how long it takes to get uh, contractors, depending on supply chain issues. I've seen, I've seen more, and I'll ask the other realtors who are with me now, um, I've seen more pictures on the MLS of houses that are either brand new or completely remodeled that are missing two or three items. What are those two or three items? The dishwasher, the cooktop, and or the oven, right? You're like, well, this is, why would they put that in there, right? Because they're still waiting on it. Because it's on a boat from China. I don't know when it's gonna get here. You're seeing that happening all the time. So know that these higher end projects uh, you're not just running into Home Depot and buying, you know, uh, you know, a, a GE off the shelf, right? You're you're buying a Bosch, you know, uh, dishwasher. It's going to take a little bit more time to get there. So uh, those supply chain issues, those labor market issues, um, and then you know what's interesting is I read an article today that said a lot of people think that in 2022, after the Fed gets inflation under control, that they're going to do what with interest rates? Bring them back down. Who knows? Who knows? Right? But the last thing that you want your buyers to do, any of our buyers to do, is what? Read that article. <laughs> because what are they, what's that going to do? What's that going to do for the housing? It's going to shut it down for six months, right? Because someone's going to think six months, I could wait that out. I could wait that out. I could, I could, I could hang out here a little bit while longer. I send my lease. But what's happening with leases right now? Anybody trying to lease a house recently? Yeah, uh, the multiple offers have moved from purchasing, purchasing houses to leasing houses, okay? So, so good luck with that strategy too. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so who knows what will happen and you know, if you guys decide to go the high end route, who knows what's gonna be going on in the economy and the world in 12 to 15 months from now. Uh, all of these items may be behind us that being said, we may have a whole new crop of items that might try to come up and, and uh, punch us in the face, right? And our job as successful real estate investors is to be able to dodge these, uh, dodge these issues. And I will tell you, your job as a real estate investor is also to manage risk, to manage risk. And what does that look like? So a lot of times I'll see um, new investors who will say, well, I don't want to, you know, hard money, you know, hard money lenders so expensive. I don't want a hard money lender, you know, whatever it may be. I will tell you. Uh, you do not want a hard money lender when the market is going down. Who do you want? You want a lender who is also your partner. Why do I say that? Is your hard money lender going to foreclose on you after they've extended your uh, loan for one or two times? They might. Is a partner who is providing the funding going to foreclose <coughs> on you? No. Be so, so it's going to cost you more money, but you're managing risk. Right? An insurance policy costs you money, but it allows you to manage risk. 
So, so be long-term greedy, right? Uh, don't be short-term greedy, because sometimes being short-term greedy can, can really hurt uh, folks. So uh, was that helpful to you guys? Was that tip helpful to you guys? Uh, so part of what we do is we'd love to be able to share these uh, tips so that you guys can be more successful in the marketplace and learn from both the things that we've done right over those last uh, 20 years, as well as the things that we've messed up and we've seen other investors mess up over the course of these last uh, few years. And we don't want you guys to uh, be trying to p play, pen the tail on the donkey, right? As in, in terms of real estate investing, which is put a blindfold on, we'll twist you around and good luck with your investing, right? That sounds terrible. So, so uh, stick with, hang with, learn from people who have made it in all different <coughs> kinds of markets. Don't try to figure it out yourself. And we can help with that um, as what we do as part of Texas RIA. So, uh, you all want to follow in the footsteps of someone who has the exact results that you are looking for, right? Let's just make it easy. Let's hit the easy button. So that's what we'd like to do uh, as part of our tribe at uh, Texas RIA. So excited to be able to be on that journey with you guys. All right. How about we do a little market update? How about we share what's been going on in the market over the last month and what we forecast over the next six months as we uh, round out 2022. So we officially have data all the way through the halfway point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, break down the data into all of Texas, which for those of you guys who are in person or watching, uh, is the slide that I have here. For those of you guys who are listening on our podcast, again, if you want the slides, uh, head over to our Facebook page or head over to our YouTube page and you'll be able to see it in all of its uh, uh, left brain, tons of numbers, eye chart glory. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for the people who are sitting in the back who might have trouble reading it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read out some of the highlights so that you know exactly what's going on here. So the first slide shows the Texas data. Uh, the good news that I have to share with you today is that the sales price last month for the average sales price was up. It was 441,000, up 13%. Months of inventory are also up. Remember I said we're adding inventory right now because buyers are dipping out of the market. In fact, last month we saw a 9.5% decline, decrease in the number of sales that happened throughout Texas. So um, uh, that is something to watch. And once you see a, a 10% decrease month after month after month, what does that do to inventory over time? It starts to increase it rapidly, right? So it's, it feels like it's, it's like, oh no, it's good, it's good, it's good. And it's like, oh my gosh, we have so much inventory, we don't even know what to do with it, right? Uh, so right now we have total active listings in Texas, uh, just under 71,000 listings. If you look at what it was the same time last year, we had about 49,000 listings last year. And uh, just even from last month, we increased 20,000 listings alone, 20,000 listings alone. Uh, so, so know that these months of inventory numbers are gonna start to creep up pretty quickly, uh, pretty quickly. And it's not because builders are building more houses, which is one of the normal indicators. Uh, it is that buyers are buying less houses. So in this case, uh, about 9.5% uh, uh, less. Now, because we're in a very interesting time right now, because we still have very little inventory, because we're still not at market equilibrium and because buyers are still buying, and remember the people who, went, who closed in June probably went under contract in May and probably locked their, possibly locked their rates before the increase in interest rates, right? Uh, so last month, the close price or the sales price to the listing price was 100.9%. So what does that mean? That means if it was listed for 100, it sold for $100,900, okay? Some markets in Texas, you're seeing close to list at 106% and higher. Uh, in Houston, uh, the average price last month was up 11%, so 436,500. Closed sales in Houston were down 8.6%, but that was one of the markets that did the best overall in Texas. Uh, but pending sales, which is our close, closest leading indicator to what closed sales will be next month in Houston, were down 7.7%. Uh, I did mention earlier about leases, right? So a lot of buyers are saying, I'm gonna move into a lease. 
So what we found is leases are up. They're up 25% in Houston year over year, and the average lease price up 11% year over year. So uh, a big strategy for a lot of buyers uh, last year, and this is kind of a no-no um, uh, from uh, the uh, Realtor Associ National Association of Realtors, but a lot of buyers were sending little love letters to sellers, right? So this is, this is our wonderful family that's gonna move in here and it's gonna be so great and we're gonna honor your family by keeping X, Y, and Z and you know, I, we, just, we just fell in love with inter, you know, whatever they, they have there. Uh, now they're writing love letters to landlords, a previously unseen phenomena, <laughs> okay? But that's how active this market is. Uh, that's how active this market is. Uh, for leases, and that's how quickly things have changed. In Austin, uh, the sales price was 669000 last month, up 13% year over year. But check out those closed sales. Closed sales in Austin were down 20% year over year. And even with that decrease, again, we saw houses going for 102.3% of what they were listed for. If you look at pending sales in Austin, uh, under 3,000 versus last year, they were 4,400 uh, pending sales. So a big drop in pending sales and a huge increase in active listings. Uh, Austin saw over a 200% increase in active listings from 2265 last year to over uh, 7,000 this year. Again, that's how quickly some of these markets can turn and change. Uh, for Dallas and Fort Worth, average sales price up 19%, $537,000 last month. Closed sales were down 8% in Dallas. Pending sales down 10%, so we'll probably see a very similar number when we look at um, the closed sales as we close out July. And active listings up 60%, so you can see again how quickly this market is changing and creating that uncertainty. So again, now we're not seeing multiple offers. Now we might start to see some offers that are coming in below list price. Now we might see some sellers who might be getting a little bit smarter and offering to buy down the points uh, or the interest rate for some of the buyers that are out there in order to help move their properties and make their properties look a little bit more attractive. Now, leases in Dallas were up 19% versus where they were the same time last year. Obviously, prices uh, up as well. In the San Antonio market, uh, San Antonio saw an average price increase up 18% to 401,000. Uh, closed sales were down 9% versus where they were the same time last year. Uh, pending sales down about 10%. Uh, so last year they were at 3,400 uh, today or last month, uh, they closed at about 3,000 and active listings have increased by about 50% in San Antonio going from 5,000 or about 5,100 to about 7,700. So again, uh, what, what, what do we owe all of this to? A 0.75% increase in the interest rate, right? So, so to break this down for you, um, uh, a 1% increase in the interest rate reduces a buyer's uh, buying capacity by about 10%. So what that means is if they were previously qualified for a $550,000 house, when you have a 1% in increase in interest rates, now because of where the monthly mortgage payments are and they're looking at those ratios, now you can only afford a $500,000 house, okay? So buyers are stepping down in terms of, uh, of what they can afford because of that interest rate. Now we might see some sellers jumping down too, and sellers have, you know, I, I, and I know some of the realtors in here have probably had these listing appointments where it's like, listen, I've done the comps, your house is gonna sell in about a week, and it's gonna sell for about $400,000. And the seller says, ah, oh, that's awesome. Let's list it for 450. So now, our seller's gonna be coming down out of the sky. Yes, they are. Are we seeing more price decreases than we've ever seen just over the last couple months? Yes, we are. So uh, just be aware that that's gonna continue. Uh, leases are up right now 31% in San Antonio versus where they were the same time last year, and lease prices are up 10%. So does that give you an idea of this uncertainty, right? 
Now maybe in six months, uh, if we get inflation under control, the Fed will start to bring those rates back down. Who knows? Uh, I can't, you know, we won't, we won't know that for at least another three to six months, right? Uh, just depends on what those uh, uh, CPI numbers come in at. And, and they, put, they put the brakes on the economy very quickly. They have the ability uh, to take the brakes off of the economy very quickly as well. Um, now, us in the middle, so, so uh, I feel like, you know, we're kind of like a, 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 a kind of a ball in the middle. It's like, okay, uh, our, our success kind of depends on, on whatever that, you know, pal guy is going to do this week, right? Uh, so, so know that that's a risk. So, so what strategy might you want to use as a real estate investor when things are a little, a little, a little uncertain? What do you want to use? I see some of you guys leaving. And, and I know what you're saying. You're saying, it's over. I guess I'll, I guess I'll leave. <laughs> yes? Some of you might be saying that. Some of you might be saying, I got in too late. What do you think? Guys, when I first started investing, interest rates were 7.5%. You can still do it. It wasn't even that hard then. Where is it? It's all this psychology business, right? So you got to figure out the psychology. Um, and you have to uh, 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 be smart about your investing. So you really, now more than ever, your formulas on what you're buying for, you can't overpay. You will be in really big trouble if you overpay. Um, you have to stick to those formulas. Now's a great time for wholesaling. Now's a great time for what we call the wraparound mortgage. Now those low interest rate loans that people have if they need to sell, oh man, we'll owner finance it to a buyer who's instead of paying a 3% interest rate, now is looking at paying a 5.5% interest rate. Right? We can solve these problems. We can get creative. Uh, and next part of the uh, presentation, we're going to share with you exactly how you can get creative. But first, I want to do a special announcement. Has, has, have you liked what you've heard so far? Is this pretty good? Three of you are really enjoying it. Fantastic. I should probably keep going. Uh, so, so guys, uh, one of the things that we want to do for you guys as members of this association is uh, help you get there and help you get there faster, help you get there smarter, help you not make any mistakes. So what we've done is we've created a training class that goes through all of the different strategies that we use to be able to survive and thrive in all of the different parts of the market cycle, including an increasing interest rate market cycle, including, listen, I've invested through multiple presidents, through multiple tax regimes, I've invested through multiple interest rates, I've invested through the best, I've invested through the worst. Um, you can still do all of this, you just tweak your strategies a little bit to respond to where the market is. So we're going to teach you what those strategies are. We'll also share with you some of the marketing campaigns to be able to find deals that are off market. We'll also give you the exact scripts, what we call the exactly what to say to be able to close any and every deal. Introduce you to other partners, uh, local experts, make sure you have funding for all of your uh, deals. And for right now, we're going to be doing that uh, uh, presentation for free. Uh, it is a weekend class, uh, so we've got several classes coming up. If you guys would like to join us and learn more, uh, if you would just pull out your uh, phones, uh, if you pull out your phones and uh, pull out the camera uh, function in there, and you might have to zoom in a little bit, uh, pull out the camera function on there, and you can get registered for any of the upcoming classes that we have. Now, as you guys are registering, we might have a couple extra slots open for new, uh, classes that are happening earlier. So feel free to uh, enroll in any of those that fit your schedule. Now, the cool thing about what we're doing is, even if you are unable to attend uh, uh, you know, one of these dates for a uh, program that's close to you, you can come to any of the other locations and you can watch on Zoom. So through the power of technology, you guys can attend any of these uh, on Zoom, either on Zoom or in person. We love to have you in person. Uh, but just uh, know that uh, we do have a couple of additional dates available if they're not already filled up because we do fill these up really quickly. So if you see a date that's earlier, register for that one. 
um, or register just for the soonest one that you can get to. If you're watching in person, again, use that QR code. If you're unfamiliar with the QR code or scanning uh, to be able to pull that up, no worries. Just pull up your internet browser, so like your Safari, for example, and just type in texasstarterkit.com and you can get registered for it there. We're gonna ask you a couple questions just to know where you are on your investing journey right now. So uh, we can help uh, uh, update the class to make sure that your time with us is as useful as possible. So go to texasstarterkit.com, we'll answer a couple of questions, uh, and we'll make sure to get you registered. If you're watching online, uh, if you're watching online, you can click the link below. Uh, that way we know uh, how you found us, which would be awesome. And love to have you guys join us to get to know more about real estate and get to know more about investing and uh, be able to, uh, again, survive and thrive no matter what the market throws at you. And I think we've got a couple of, uh, I think we've got a couple of big changes that are coming up. And you guys will all wanna make sure that you know exactly what to do in spite of uh, those changes. So real estate is always changing. Uh, we're always in some spot of the real estate cycle, right? I will tell you what's interesting about uh, going into a down market is the, the up market typically goes up at about, let's say like a 45 degree angle. When it goes down, it goes down much steeper and much faster. So it's typically three to five years up and then one to three years down. So when you are investing in a market that could be a little shaky, you guys need to be, this is where uh, your chops come out, right? This is where your smarts and your intelligence comes, come out in, in these markets. So uh, we're gonna share with you everything that we've learned from investing through uh, not dissimilar markets over the last 20 years. And guys, as we get ready for the next part of the presentation, I want to introduce someone who's very near and dear to me, uh, someone I've been investing with for the last two decades, uh, my husband, Phil Grove and he's gonna come up and share all the tips, tricks, and tribal knowledge that have allowed us to uh, be successful over these last two decades, uh, have allowed us to not have to update our resume in 20 years. Uh, we've done everything uh, in real estate and haven't had to go work for someone else, haven't had to ask for time off, uh, haven't had to ask for time to be able to spend with our, uh, our son or our family. And he's gonna share with you uh, all, of those, uh, all, all of those steps to be able to make it through any part of the market cycle. What you guys will love about learning from him is not only uh, has uh, these techniques allowed us to amass a net worth that's over $20 million over these 20 years, uh, he's also has a great background for teaching. So he was a double major, computer science and electrical engineering. So how that helps you guys is he's able to break down some of these different strategies that we use in every part of the market cycle in a step-by-step-by-step -step -step format so that you can put it into play in your personal business. Will you guys please give Mr. Phil Grove a warm welcome. Thank you. Alrighty. Thank you for that introduction and thank you all. We've got lots to do. Let me go ahead and put the slide up and uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna talk about the top 12 investing strategies for today's Texas market. Like uh, Shana has been talking about, a lot going on right now and uh, change is a good thing. You know, we've been through up markets, down markets, sideways markets, and every time the markets change, here's what I notice. The pros make a killing and the rookies get killed. And I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to show you how to make a killing. 2008 was one of the best years of my life, real estate and financially invested uh, by, by, by that standard. Um, made a killing in 2008. Um, invented something called the AMP strategy. Uh, 2008, the banks went bankrupt. Uh, subprime lending came to an end up until 2008. Uh, real estate investing had been fueled with subprime lending. All that stopped. A lot of real estate investors went broke. I made a killing. And the way I made a killing is I developed a strategy where I took the loans from all those people who were given loans that, that they couldn't afford and had no hope of paying them back. And I took the loans from the people who didn't want them. And I gave their loans to people who wanted them and couldn't get them because the banks were not lending anymore. So I sold unsellable houses to unloanable buyers and I made a killing, solving a problem created by a disruption in the marketplace. There are new disruptions coming right now. And mark my words, every time the disruptions happen, 
The pros will make a killing and the rookies get killed. I like market disruptions. I like change. It creates opportunity, but you have to approach it the right way. We're gonna talk about how to do that right now. For those of you that are listening to us online, if you are on GoToWebinar, great, keep going. If you are on Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, or on our podcast, you may or may not be listening live. Uh, if you want to register for the next live event in person or online, you can go to texasreas.com forward slash live and make sure you get signed up and there's no harm in doing exactly that. So this presentation is sponsored by the Texas Reas, the largest by far network of real estate investor associations in the great state of Texas. So over 87,000 members, participants and attendees. Why do you care? Why does that matter? Well, it does matter because real estate is local. Laws are local. Contracts are local. Contractors are local. Buyers and sellers are local. Houses are local. Everything about real estate is local. There's 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there that teach people how to invest in real estate. They all talk about how to do it anywhere. Well, how to do it anywhere is how to do it at 30,000 feet. But real estate is not bought and sold at 30,000 feet. Real estate is bought and sold at zero feet. So if you'd like to know what laws apply here, what strategies work here, what's going on in the market here, which neighbors to invest in here, where do you get all that? That's what you get at your local real estate investor association. And my job is to make you all into uh, uh, attentive and participatory members of this community. So <clears throat> why am I here? Well, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys today. Your time is valuable. I'm going to repay you for your valuable time by sharing some very valuable training and information with you. I'll tell you just a little bit about how I got into this. 2003, I went from working in a nine to five job that by then I hated to eventually making over a million dollars a year investing in real estate. I've been doing that for many, 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 many years now. And over the next, oh, maybe up to 90 minutes, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I learned and what I did right. And I'm also gonna share with you what I did wrong because the best way to learn is not from your mistakes. It's from what? Other people's mistakes. Yeah, experience is the toughest teacher there is. You get the test first and then you get the lesson after. That is not how you want to learn how to invest in real estate. So we're gonna share a little tribal knowledge and encourage you to join us as well. So what are we gonna to learn today? Well, one thing we're gonna learn is nine different strategies to make money in big chunks. Sounds good, doesn't it? But I'm not here to sound good, I'm here to teach you. And, and one of the things I'm gonna teach is the, the beauty of real estate is it's what we call a transaction-based business. What does that really mean? That means you do this, 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 you get a check, you do this, this, this again, you get another check. And it scales, right? And it's scalable. You know, most of you probably make money in a job. A job does not scale. The problem with a job is fundamentally a job is an exchange of time for money. The reason you can't get wealthy with a job is there's only so much time you can exchange. So many hours in your month, year, literally is so many hours left of you, of the rest of your life that you can exchange for money working for somebody else. But real estate's transaction-based. You do this, 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 you get a check, you do this, this, this again, and you get another check. And you can leverage other people's time and money and resources. And if you do that, then there's literally no limit to the number of transactions that you can do, which means no limit to the amount of money that you can make. One of the motivators for me to become a real estate investor, I wanted to make more money than I, than I made when I was in corporate America. So I figured out pretty quick, well, to make more money, I need to do a lot of transactions. To do a lot of transactions, I have to do them in a scalable way. Anything that limits how many deals I can do, I'm not interested in that. So for example, I don't have enough money to be a real estate investor. None of you have enough money to be real estate investors. Donald Trump does not have enough money to be a real estate investor. You, you get that, right? I don't care what you have, not close to being enough. You got half a million dollars in your checking account, good for you, go buy a house. Now you're done. Yep, you're done, yeah. Can't buy another house until you sell the house you have. That doesn't scale. You have to be prepared to buy any number of properties at any time at any price. You have no idea what that incredible deal you're gonna to find tomorrow looks like. So you have to get comfortable using other people's money. I can't be averaging others, I can be everywhere at once. And I do have an unlimited amount of resources and I have an infinite amount of money to fund an infinite number of deals. And that, my friends, is how you get wealthy. So we're gonna show you several different strategies that scale. In fact, I'm gonna show you nine different ways to make money 
even with no money and with no credit, because whether you have any money or not, you don't have enough. Nobody does. How about how to turn even a small IRA into millions of dollars tax-free? I'm going to demonstrate that. I think you'll be impressed. How about how to acquire $10 million in rental properties with little or no money and with no credit? My wife and I own a portfolio of about $20 million worth of houses here in Texas, mostly free and clear. Now, if I wanted to go out and buy, though, $20 million worth of houses traditionally, think about it. I'd have to put down 20% at least every time I bought a house. In other words, I'd have to be a multimillionaire just to become a millionaire. Well, I didn't have millions of dollars, right, and, and an in, endless and infinite amount of credit when I started investing in real estate. So how was I able to accumulate $20 million worth of houses without having millions of dollars just in down payments alone, right? Well, I had to learn how to buy houses with little or no money and with no credit. Because whether you have money or credit or not, you don't have enough. That doesn't scale. So I'm going to teach you that trick as well, and I think you're going to like that trick a lot. That's probably my very best trick. Okay, so great. How come everybody doesn't make a million dollars a year investing in real estate? Well, most people get stuck, usually right at the starting blocks. And I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't claim to be the smartest guy in this room. But one thing I do claim is I have been to this room before. You guys are all on a journey to become real estate investors or to take your investing to the next level. And the journey you're on feels new to you. Well, it is new to you, but it's not new. Millions of people have traveled on the road that you are on right now. And I'm going to tell you, everybody that gets into this business, they all make all the same mistakes. They all hit the same potholes. They all make the same right and wrong decisions. They all have the same self-limiting beliefs. Right? And, and right, going back to what I said before, you can, you can learn through trial and error, or you can learn from tribal knowledge, right? The, the, the trial and error that, that others before you have already done and figured out. So most people, when they get into this business, they get stuck right at the starting blocks. For example, what are some of the problems? Fear is a big one. Fear is a big problem. A lot of people are just afraid to do this, take action. I was scared to death, honestly, when I did my very first deal about 19 years ago. I'm afraid I'm going to lose money. I'm afraid I'm going to have to fill out a contract. Fear paralyzes a lot of people right at the, at the starting blocks. Next problem, finding deals. Good deals are hard to find. Anybody that tells you that good deals are easy to find is either a liar or a fool. The hardest thing about this business is finding the deals. And then finally, doing the deal, right? And what I love most about being a real estate investor is there's so many different ways to do it. I'm going to teach you a whole bunch of different ways to do deals, stuff you're not going to learn watching HETV or YouTube videos. So for most people, these are the problems, and most people never get past these problems. But here's the really good news. This is exactly what local longstanding real estate investor associations are set up to do. Longstanding local communities of investors sharing tribal knowledge and helping people get past these problems, get started investing in real estate. So I'm going to help you guys get started exactly the same way that this RIA helped me when I was sitting in these chairs myself uh, about 18 years ago. Okay, little disclaimer, I'll take a deep breath here. This subject matters for educational purposes only. We are not lawyers, CPAs, financial planners, etc. You should always have your contracts, taxes, business plans, etc. reviewed by an attorney and or financial advisor before completing any real estate transactions. Government regulations also require that I disclose that the results that I discuss are not typical results. I am an action taker and have achieved remarkable results, and the investors I talk about are action takers and not your typical average people. I believe average people don't take any action and therefore get zero results. Only you can decide if you're going to be a typical average person or an above average action taker. You know, another way to say all that is a little saying we have here in Texas, all hat and no Anybody here from Texas? All hat and no cattle. Yeah, what does that mean? Everybody says they're going to roll up their sleeves. Everybody says they're going to go out and do something. But most people go out and do what? Nothing. Probably heard of the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the people make all the money in the world. I think in real estate investing, it's more like the 95-5 rule. It's like 5% of the people make all the money the, because only 5% take action. But the ones that take action, they don't just make money, they make gobs of money, incredible amounts of money. Do you guys know that in this country, almost 80% of the millionaires in this country got their all or in part through investing in real estate? 
Do you know it's really, really, really difficult to become a millionaire not investing in real estate? But you can't be all hat and no cattle. You do have to roll up your sleeves and take action. All right, <clears throat> fear. I said a lot of people are afraid to get started. I think we can help with that right off the bat. In fact, I'm gonna give you a million reasons, over a million reasons why you don't have to be afraid to take action and to be a real estate investor. Because if you look at the names on the screen, there's just a teeny tiny sample of people that came to the RIA, watched pretty much the same training you're going through right now, and with a little help, they became real estate investors. I'm not gonna read all of these, but I'll read just a couple of them. Rochelle Swan, pharmacist here in uh, Texas, Came to the RIA, made $35,000 on her very first deal. With my help, I personally helped her. Uh, she is now a real estate investor. Barry Adlin worked for Cisco here in Texas and uh, came to the RIA, got some training, uh, learned how to flip houses, flipped five houses, made $100,000, quit his job. He is now a real estate investor. Stephanie Grahn, she came to the RIA, got some training, and she partnered on her first deal. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, most people, when they want to become real estate investors, what do they do? They buy some book on how to invest in real estate. They watch some YouTube videos. They're like, honey, honey, let's go flip a house, right? Uh, they go try to figure it all out on their own. They probably make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes they even lose money. Um, well, here's like a different idea. Here's like an alternative plan. How about instead of all that, when you're ready to do your first deal, why not partner with somebody who's maybe done it hundreds of times before leverage their experience, leverage their money, learn how to do it the right way, and then split the profits. Now, I know what everybody's thinking. Everybody always asks the same question. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Why would a local multi-millionaire multi -millionaire experienced real estate investor want to partner with a rookie? Why would they do that? Well, I'm going to give you all a fact of life. This is just a fact of life. If you ever want to do business, with somebody operating at a higher business stature than you, here's how it works. You're gonna have to help them before they're gonna help you. I'm sorry, that's how life works. So what could you possibly do to help a multimillionaire local real estate investor bring them a money-making deal? And that's exactly what Stephanie brought to me. She brings me this deal and she says, what do you think of this deal? I said, that's a money-making deal. And then she said, would you partner on the deal with me? I said, for half the profits, heck yes. She learned how to do it the right way. I got the half the profits. That's called a win-win. And then after doing that first deal, she made 32,000 on that first deal. She went and flipped some other houses, made $100,000 and quit her full-time job. She is now a real estate investor. And I'll tell you just a little bit more about that story. After she makes this money flipping houses, she goes into work and she quits her job. She puts in her two weeks notice and her boss stops her. Whoa, what are you doing, Stephanie? We like you, we like you, why are you quitting? And she's like, I can't afford to work here anymore. I make more money investing in real estate. So the next day, her boss calls me, yeah, on the phone to have a little chat. Awkward. I'll never forget what he says to me. He says, I want you to teach me what you taught her because I don't wanna work here anymore either. And you guessed it, now her boss, Glenn, is a member of the RIA and a real estate investor. Okay, just one more, just one more. Jerry and Leslie Gossett, beautiful story. 20-something newlyweds, they were given a plan. All right, kids, here's your plan. You will go to high school, you will study, you will graduate, you will get a degree. You go to college, you will study, you will graduate, you will get a degree. You'll go get a career, a job, and you'll work your way through that job and career until you retire. That's your plan. I was given a similar plan, probably many of you were given a similar plan, and then they sat in the same training you guys are going through right now. At the end of the training, these 20-something-year-old kids, they kind of scratched their heads and they said, well, wait a minute, maybe there's another plan. So, so what did they do? Well, they went out and they partnered, remember partnering? I partnered with them. They partnered on two deals in two months, made $100,000. And after these 20-something-year-old kids made $100,000 partnering on two deals in two months, they scratched their heads again. And they said, ooh, we like that plan. We like that plan a lot. So what do you suppose they did next? What would you do next? Yeah, 35 more on average netting. Netting is how much you have left after all expenses, okay? On average netting 40,000 a house, I'll do the math for you. These 20 something year old workforce dropouts netted a cool 1.2 million bucks working on their plan B. Not bad for a couple of 20 somethings working on a plan B. They are now real estate investors. 
So I'm not going to read all the rest of these. I think you've really got the idea, though. But look, if you're invited to be part of a large, long-standing local community of real estate investors, if you're given access to off-market wholesale real estate to buy, if you're given access to the capital to purchase those properties and the power teams necessary to fix those properties and to flip those properties, if you're given the most advanced training on this planet Earth on exactly how to do all of this right here, right now, using strategies and techniques that have been assembled for decades on how to do this right here, right now, if people within the community, such as myself, even offer to partner on deals with you and then split the profits with you, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, is anybody here afraid to do this? Can I cross out the fear? This is the interactive part of the presentation. Can I cross out the fear? Thank you, I'm gonna do that. So let's get a little more interactive here because this is what they sent me up here for. Um, how many of you would like a little help getting started? Who would like a little help getting started? All right, great, let's get started. Thank you. Okay, speaking of getting started, I got started sitting in these same chairs, uh, December 15, 2003. That's the day I did my very, very first deal. Been involved in about 1,200 since then. And I'll show you some of the deals and I'll tell you some of the stories that made me money. I did a renovation on a street called uh, Tin Burnham, flipped a house on a street called Corsair. I did a renovation I kept as a rental, still own that to this day. It's gone up by like five times. Did an equity partnering deal, did a short sale I kept as a homestead, did an auction option and another flip and another short sale, bought a property subject too. We're gonna to talk about that, kept it as rental, still in that one. Short sale, another assignment, another assignment, another renovation. You know, let me just speed this up because we're gonna be here all night. More renovations, more rental properties, more short sales, more wholesales, more subject twos, more wraparound mortgages. Let me speed this up more. More short sales, more assignments, more flips, more wraps, more subject twos, more wholesale, short sale, flip, renovation. Okay, so what's the bottom line? I do approximately a real estate transaction a week. In some shape, form, variety, or another, I do approximately a real estate transaction a week. And what that does, it creates money in big chunks. Now, that sounds good, doesn't it? Ooh, money in chunks. But I'm not here to sound good. I'm here to teach you. So what does this mean? How does this work? Fundamentally, this business works as, as follows. We do things to find people with problems, to get people with problems to call us. What kind of problems? They have a house they don't want, don't need, a mortgage they can't afford. Problems to entrepreneurs are what? Opportunities. Big problems are what? Big opportunities. So if you're thinking like, I don't want any problem, you're thinking, I don't want to be a real estate investor. Every entrepreneur has something in common with every other entrepreneur. They solve problems. Solve big problems that the world has a lot of. You can get paid a lot to do exactly that. So let's get specific. Let's not talk general. Let's get into specifics. I'll give you some examples. I found somebody facing foreclosure, big problem. And I gave them an out, something called a short sale, allowed them to sell their house without having to bring money to the table, without completely destroying their credit. And I made $16,000 helping somebody out of a situation solve a problem. Uh, REO stands for real estate owned bank owned property. Banks do not like to own real estate. Uh, I took this property off the bank's hands, flipped it, made 36,000. Guy had an interesting legal problem, had to sell a house by Friday, got on a contract, wholesaled it, made 5,000, got a property subject to, no money, no credit, flipped it, made 68,000, 5,600 on an assignment, uh, $6,000 on a mortgage assignment, $10,000 on a wholesale, 2,800 on a small referral, 12,400 for a large referral. The way this business works is as follows. We do marketing, we do things, to get people with problems to call us, to find people with problems. And here's the really beautiful part. For every situation, for every problem and situation that exists, we have a strategy, a solution that helps them, this is about helping people, solves a problem and gets us paid. We can help motivated sellers, we can help non-motivated sellers, we can help people that own their houses free and clear, we can help people that are hopelessly underwater where they owe more money and the house is even worth. We can help them, we can solve the problem and get paid. Sometimes we get singles, sometimes we get doubles, Sometimes we get home runs. Sometimes I work on a lead, a deal, an opportunity, a problem for six months, and after six months, I make $5,000. And I'm like, oh man, six months, $5,000. I could have made more money working at Walmart. Thank goodness I'm not working on just one lead at a time. Sometimes my phone rings and that phone call makes me $55,000 in 48 hours. I'm like, oh man, I wish every time my phone rang, I made $55,000 in 48 hours, but that's not how it works either. 
that's maybe one out of 100 phone calls. So the question you, see to, you need to ask is simple. Okay, well then how often do you get 100 phone calls? Well, that depends on you and how much marketing that you do. Do you get 100 phone calls every week? Do you get 100 phone calls every month? Do you get 100 phone calls every year? Well, that depends on you and how much looking marketing that you do. There's two essential skills that I'm gonna teach you right now to be a real estate investor. The first and foremost skill is marketing. Marketing is finding the deal, generating the lead. A lead is nothing more than the name and number of somebody that might wanna sell real estate. You need to spend 85% of your time and money on marketing, generating leads, finding deals. Next skill we have to learn is strategy. Strategy is doing the deal, solving the problem. We buy houses, we help people sell houses, get rid of houses and mortgages they don't want or can't afford anymore. We do that in a variety of different ways that solves a variety of different problems. So marketing and strategy, finding deals, doing deals, finding problems, solving problems. Okay, we use 65 tested, proven, perfected methods of finding off-market wholesale property. I'm gonna teach you those. Use a dozen different strategies that I'm gonna teach you to help people solve the problem and get the, get the deal done. Over half of the marketing methods, by the way, are completely free. And nine of the 12 investing strategies are actually no money and no credit strategies. So when you learn how to buy and flip houses with no money and no credit, then how many houses can you buy and flip? Okay, that would be all of them. How many do you wanna buy and flip? That's an easy one. That would be all of them, okay? Okay, so marketing and strategy, finding deals, doing deals, finding problems, solving problems. Let's get started with the marketing. Actually, first I'm gonna tell you a quick story. This was the, the very first house that I flipped. Uh, on December 15, 2003. And I'll tell you a little story. On December 14, 2003, I was scared to death. I was actually being coached and mentored by the two guys who ran the Real Estate Investor Association back then. I called them both on the phone on December 14, 2003. I'm scared. Are you sure this is going to work? I don't want to lose any money. Yeah, it took two seasoned, experienced real estate investors pulling me kicking and screaming over the starting block. So if you're a little scared, I get it, I can relate, and I can help. But I had one other thing that was also motivating me to move forward at that time in my life. I was in a job I no longer loved, and I was in a career that I no longer loved. And I'm gonna tell you, if you're spending your time doing something you don't love doing, you need a do something different with your life plan. And that's where I was on December 15, 2003. I, I was in a place in my life where I realized that the trajectory that I was on was never going to get me to the place I wanted to be. I was just never going to get there, right? And it's hard to change, but I needed something different. And that was the motivation to get me to take action, right, and, and start on a different path. So that first deal, your first deal in so many ways is your most important deal. It's kind of like your first kiss. Right, everybody remembers their first kiss, life-changing experience, everybody remembers their first deal, life-changing experience. I'll tell you about mine. It took me six months to find my first deal. I was actually an unusually slow starter. I got it under contract with a contract I got right here at the RIA. Bought it using OPM, private money, other people's money, private money lender right here at the, the RIA, over a thousand private money lenders in this organization. Uh, I got a contractor here at the RIA to fix it, got a realtor here at the RIA, to, uh, to sell it for me. I uh, got a title company, an attorney right here at the RIA to close it. Uh, and I went to that very first closing. I picked up that very first check for $15,384.26. And do you know when they handed me that check, it was like you unscrewed the cap, popped out the old brain, popped in the new brain. You see, right up until the moment that they handed me that check, I was a real estate investor based on theory. And I wasn't even sure I believed the theory. I don't know about this, I'm not sure about that, don't know if that's gonna work either. But the second that they handed me that check, like a switch flipping, I became a real estate investor based on experience. You see, I didn't know anything different except that I knew it actually worked. And what I realized is that if I did this and this and this again, I get another check, right? It worked the first time, and then if I did this, this, and this again, I get another check. If I did this, this, and this again, I get another check. <laughs> that was 1,200 deals ago. But the, you know what the really big deal I realized? The really big one? What I realized right at that moment was that I would never, ever, 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 for the rest of my life, ever, ever have to work for somebody else, 
ever, 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 never, ever again. Yeah, and I haven't, have not worked for anybody else even for one second since they gave me that very first check. So if you're new and you're just getting started, here's my first piece of advice. You need to focus yourself like a laser beam on that very first deal because that very first deal will change your life. Deals two, three, four, five, and six, they get easier and easier and easier. So I told you I was gonna tell you what I did right. I'm also gonna tell you what I did wrong. I did make one big mistake right out of the chute. I spent all that time finding the deal. I finally found the deal. Once I found the deal, I kind of put my marketing on hold. I picked up some hammers, started managing contractors, working on that deal, right? Trying to make all the money I could off of that deal. I finished the deal, I got the check, only to wake up the next day and realize I had absolutely nothing to do, except start the whole business all over again. And this gets me to my very first takeaway. And here it is, and this is the big one. The business of being a real estate investor is the business of finding deals. It's all about finding deals. Why? Because you make your money on the buy. What does that mean? That means as soon as you find a property and get under contract, whatever money was gonna be made or not made on that deal, it's done right at that moment, the second you got it under contract. Yeah, you get the money at the end on the sell, but you make the money on the buy. You always have to spend 85 percent of your time and money on marketing, looking for the next deal. And you always have to approach this business such that the next deal is always more important than the deal you have now. The rookies all screw this up. They do a deal, finally they do a deal, make some money, great, but they stop the marketing. So eventually they reset the marketing, eventually get it going again, find another deal, do a deal, make some money, great, but they stop the marketing. So eventually they restart the marketing, eventually get it going again, right? Do a deal, make some money, great, but they stop the marketing. They don't do it in a scalable way and their income goes like this with big gaps in between. You need your income to do this, okay? You're gonna learn this either right now or you're gonna take the next two and a half years to learn this, that's up to you. You need your income to do this and the way you get your income to do this is you always have to spend 85% of all of your time and money on marketing, looking for the next deal, and you have to always approach this business remembering that the next deal is always more important than the deal you have now. And hint, the deals you are looking for are not in the MLS. The MLS is the multiple listing service. It's the retail market for real estate. It's where realtors sell real estate. It's where all the people in the world compete with each other to see who will pay the most. And I hate to say it, but when you're competing against all the people in the world, some of those people are stupid. And you don't wanna compete against stupid. Well, at least you don't wanna win competing against stupid. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I love the MLS, I adore the MLS. Why do I love and adore the MLS? Because after I buy off-market wholesale real estate, where do I then want to resell it? Yeah, on the MLS, because it's been proven that any property on the MLS will sell for the most that it can possibly be sold for. That's just never where you're going to find heavily discounted wholesale real estate. The very best deal in the entire MLS is not a deal I would likely ever take even a second look at. So, finding deals. Once I realized this whole shooting match is about finding deals, then I started to systematize the process of finding deals. And over time, developed 65 different methods for finding deals. Actually, it's not totally accurate to say I developed 65 methods. What would be more accurate is to say I found 65 things that work and I started to do those things. In fact, I need to teach you all a really important lesson, maybe the most important lesson I'm gonna teach you today. But for me to teach you this next lesson, first I need to unteach you all something. Okay, so I gotta unteach you all something. Um, when you guys are in elementary school, if you looked over the paper next to you and you copied down the answers, that was called what? Cheating. And you're all told that cheating is what? Wrong, bad. Okay, we're not a bunch of little kids. We're not in elementary school anymore. Going forward, I need you all to unlearn that. Okay, because going forward, guess what? Che cheating, yeah, cheating's a shortcut. Are you kidding me? What am I saying 
What I'm saying is simple. There is nothing that you are trying to do. There's absolutely nothing that you are trying to figure out that I and other people haven't already done and figured out. Everything, and I mean everything, and I mean absolutely everything about this business is completely understood. We know what's in the soil. We know the zoning. We know the guys who write the zoning. We know the appreciation rate down to the street address in all the major metropolitan cities across the state of Texas. We know the exact letters to send to the exact mailing list. We know the exact words to use. We know exactly how to overcome objections. We even know how many contracts are going to get signed for every 10,000 letters we send out. Everything, and I mean everything, and I mean absolutely everything about this business is completely understood. And once I realized that everything I was trying to do and everything I was trying to figure out, other people had done and figured out, then I finally stopped trying to figure everything out and I just started to, here's that word, copy, right, copy the top 65 tested proven methods of finding deals. Now, some of these methods take time and some of these methods take money. When you get started, you're probably gonna have more time and less money. Uh, once you get going, you have more money and less time. I will tell you, I don't spend any time anymore at all on marketing. I outsource 100%. But when I got started, I insourced a lot more. So, what are all these different marketing methods? Well, let me teach you a whole bunch. The first set of strategies has to do with direct mail. This is sending letters and postcards to lists of people that may be motivated sellers that have problems. And some of them will call you back. It's a numbers game, right? Those are called leads. For every problem, we have a solution, and some of them will say yes, and those are called deals. So you can get mailing lists of people that didn't pay their property taxes, people that are late paying their mortgage, people that have filed for divorce. Two people were combining their money to pay a mortgage, now one of them's gone. Well, the one that's left is probably having trouble making the mortgage payment by themselves. You can get a list of people who've inherited a house from somebody that passed away. Uh, people whose credit scores just went down 300 points. People that just got dismissed from bankruptcy. Certainly a lot of financial distress there. You can get a non-owner occupied list. There's a list of people who own a house that they don't live at the address of the house they own. Technically, that's a landlord. And a lot of them are what we call accidental landlords. They moved away and they let an ex-spouse or friend or family member or neighbor stay in the house. Maybe they inherited a house uh, that has a tenant in it. Uh, they don't really understand real estate, investing, depreciation, property management. Eventually, they usually become motivated sellers. You can get a list of people who rent to people on public assistance. You get a code enforcement list. There's a list of people, you know, the city is already driving around, right? Issuing citations for abandoned houses, hoarder houses, deferred maintenance houses. You can get the city to share their big list with you. You can even get an expired listing list. This is a list of people who hired a realtor tried for a long time to sell it on the MLS and it didn't sell. So what do we know about these people? 100% of these people would like to sell their house, probably now more than ever, but they need solutions that realtors don't offer. Well, hello, that's exactly what investors do offer. So if you send letters and postcards to these lists of people with problems, some of them will call you back, right? That's called a lead. You make them an offer that solves a problem. We have an offer for every problem. Some of them will say yes, and those are called deals. With a website, you can get leads on the internet, bandit signs, 18 by 24 inch plastic, core plastic signs, see them along the side of the road. Why do you see them? Because they work. Newspaper ads still work. Email, autoresponders, magnetic sign, little sign on the side of your uh, car. You put the sign on once, you get leads for the rest of your life. Door hangers, you don't want to pay the postage. For 10 cents a door, you can have a door hanger put on every door in a neighborhood. Ooh, here's one that's pretty much free, driving for dollars. Sometimes I'm driving around and I see a tarp on a roof. They might as well wait, be waving around, be waving around a big red flag. Desperate motivated seller, please, please buy my house. I mean, think about this. Somebody's most valuable asset, a house, has a serious problem, a leak, and their solution was to go buy a $5 tarp at Home Depot. How come they didn't fix the roof? No money. Same guy's not fixing the roof, not paying his insurance, not paying his taxes, probably not paying his mortgage. Sooner or later, an investor is going to pick up that deal. All right, what are the other marketing strategies? Oh, wait, we have a special announcement. We interrupt this program. Actually, Chanel already made the announcement, so she kind of stole my thunder. Yeah, we have a tour coming up. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because she already kind of talked about it, but I will be teaching this myself. 100% uh, Texans, each in Texans, how to invest in Texas. Practical, actionable, detailed, step-by-step -step training. Uh, we're doing it live and we're doing it online, simulcast, 12 different strategies, all 65 marketing methods. We're going to even teach closes. Closes are the words you say to get somebody to accept your offer, your, 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 your contract, your offer, your, your solution to their problem. Uh, you know, and, and there's a science to it. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate a close uh, shortly. I'm going to show you how I got a woman to give me her house for free. Just gave me the house for free. She says, here's the house, you can have it, just like that. Now, you're all probably thinking, that's ridiculous. That's exactly what I want you to think. I'm saying something outrageous and ridiculous, and then when I demonstrate it in a few minutes, you're all going to be really impressed. So hold on, I'm going to show you how closes work. Uh, you're going to learn how you can partner with me and other local experts. Uh, how can you access our funding to fund your deals? We have over a thousand private money lenders in this network. Private money is faster, cheaper, and in every way better than hard money or any other kind of money. Uh, thousands, and I mean thousands, and I mean thousands of successful Texas real estate investors have launched their careers at this workshop, The Real Deal, Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas. So, and we're doing it for free, so how cool is that? So it's a tour, exclusive three-city tour. Uh, pick the dates that work best for you and sign up. Now, if none of these dates work for you, if you have conflicts, for example, if your daughter's getting married, my suggestion is that you reschedule the wedding because the most important thing that'll change your life in a good way is coming to the workshop. Okay, and you can get registered if you're live here by just taking a picture of the QR code and uh, or going to the link. If you are online, uh, click on the link that should be in the comments or somewhere around this video below, uh, and we'll see you after you get registered. And I'll go through more details of what's included in the starter kit a little bit later. Uh, so let's get back to the marketing. Oh, Olivia, can I, can I have you come up here for a minute? I'm actually going to interrupt this for a minute. Can I get you to come up here for a minute? Um, we have a special guest with us tonight, and I'm going to introduce her to you. And... Uh, kind of explain what this is. So um, we have a little show uh, called Houses Flipping People. Uh, and, you know, uh, most uh, TV flipping shows are about people flipping houses. Well, our show is called Houses Flipping People. Get it? And it's about Texas real estate investors whose lives have been transformed from becoming real estate investors. They sat in the same chairs, they came to the workshop, and then they went out and did it. Uh, and now they're actually making money in all kinds of different ways and we're telling their stories. So, and we have the host of the show, uh, Olivia, who's here tonight. And um, she goes all over Texas in a mobile TV studio and interviews people and tells their stories. Uh, we estimate there's at least 100 millionaires, some multimillionaires, uh, that didn't know anything uh, before they actually came to the workshop and then went out and did it and were telling their stories. So Olivia, can you tell them a little bit about the, uh, the show? Hey everyone, I'm Olivia. Thanks so much for being here. And uh, yeah, so the show is very fun and excited. I don't just go in and talk about the house, but also the real estate investor's life. How much has the, their life, their transformation has transformed since they became an investor? And because a little bit about my story, that's how we kind of end up with houses with the people because we all know about the house and we have seen many, many shows. But how about the people behind the scenes, us as an investor and the people who want to become an investor? And that is why we don't just show the house, but I like to talk about that person, that individual, that family. How much has real estate transformed their life? And why do we even want to become a real estate investor in the first place? And that is what I love, being a real estate investor myself right now. Yeah, and I mean, the uh, people, basically, the, the way the show is, you interview the people, they talk about kind of like what they did. They were school teachers or football players or firemen or all kinds of different things. And then kind of what led them to becoming real estate investors, some of the challenges that they had to overcome. And then you go and watch a deal. So you actually walk through a house and make a video and kind of talk about the deal and how much they made on the deal and, and how they found the, the deal yeah, how they, they sometimes they didn't negotiate right. every single one is different so right. it's not really and, and then how their life was ultimately transformed yes. at the end so and you you were actually uh sitting in these chairs yourself you actually uh came 
uh, to the workshop not, not long ago. And I'm gonna tell your story. Uh, you tell everybody else's story, I get to tell your story. You came here and you had some self-limiting beliefs. You thought, it, it, when you showed up, you thought, you know, I really can't do this. Why did you think you couldn't do this? Well, I didn't know that we could, that I could be a real estate investor without money. And of course, I thought I need a background, I need a rich family, I need money to be an investor. So every time I heard the word investor, I felt like I wouldn't belong here, I didn't know anything about it. And okay. that is when I came here and it completely transformed. So when you came here, did you own a home? No, I did not. Okay, did you have any money? Uh, barely made it through the end of the month, so. Okay, and did you have any debt? Unfortunately, yes, I really knew how to spend money on credit cards. <laughs> I was a pro on it. I had $50,000 on credit card, but I was doing well because I was making the minimal payment every month, so I thought I was doing the right thing. So, so. you had no home, 50000 in debt, barely kind of getting by so you had like oh, i can't be a real estate investor you came to the workshop we said look there's all these things you can do you can use other people's money you can flip houses you can partner on deals uh and did that change your life it did not just change but transform my life and so my boys life they are 14 and 17 they are coming for the ride with me they are learning as well so do you own a home now i own multiple homes yes I own, I don't know how many right now. I have Fix and Flip here in San Antonio. I have Homestead in Austin. I have a buying hold in Austin. And I have some other deals throughout Texas as well. So all this w was when I came to this workshop. So here I am telling my story. Tell, telling your story and, and we're, we're also uh, telling other people's stories. So um, some of this, some of the episodes, these are not the most current episodes, but these are the episodes over the last several months. Uh, Flavia uh, came to this workshop. She was actually a baker, had a, a bakery, successful one, and then the pandemic hit, and in a minute, she lost her bakery. So she basically went from making money to making no money, and she needed to have a new career to make a lot of money fast. Uh, and she came to this workshop, became a real estate investor, and went on to flip 15 houses in a pretty short amount of time. Uh, Jeff came to this workshop. He was a six-figure, high-paid executive that just got laid off, so he had no money. Uh, and on top of that, when, when, when his boss fired him, his wife also left him, so he can go through a simultaneous divorce and uh, you know, job loss, needed to replace uh, his income fast. Uh, we taught him how to flip houses, made half a million dollars. So we call that kind of a uh, divorce revenge. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but uh, uh, let's see, Vanessa and Mike, they were contractors, general contractors. They worked for people in this network as the contractors fixing up the houses for the investors. And then they came to me and they said, well, we wanna be the investor. They're, they're, the investors are making the big money. We're working for the investor, helping them make the big money. How do we be the investor ourselves? Uh, taught them how to flip houses. They just flipped a house and they made $2 million profit on a single flip. $2 million profit on a single fix and flip. Now, obviously that's not normal but they bought a property, I don't remember the exact numbers, it's in the show if you wanna go watch the show. Uh, they bought it for like 1.9 million, they spent a lot of money totally rebuilding the thing, sold it for 5.9 million, obviously a multi-million dollar house. Two million bucks, just, just one deal, just one deal. Talk about life changing. Um, we have uh, Rosie and Roger Realtors, uh, same kind of thing. They're, they're helping the investors sell their houses where they're like, we wanna be you know, paid on page one of the HUD, not page two of the HUD, you know? And so we taught them how to flip houses. So they flipped a bunch of houses. A therapist came and, and said, I wanna flip houses, taught her how to be a builder flipping houses. So you can uh, check it out on YouTube. It's called uh, Houses Flipping People. And uh, any other advice or, or uh, uh, things you wanna tell, tell everybody here? I'm just excited that you guys are here. Please take your time, come see us on the three day life event, get to know us, get to know the network. This network, this workshop did transform my life and I can't wait to feature your guys story on how to sleep with people as well. So thank you everyone. All right, thank you Olivia, appreciate it. So a uh, little, 
little random interruption. Let me get back to our main presentation. Okay, so what were the other marketing strategies? Uh, letters of intent. What is a letter of intent? A letter of intent is an offer. Okay, so who should you send an offer to? And the answer is everybody. I'm gonna give you your first homework assignment. Tomorrow, I want you to send 200 people an offer on their house. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Here's how investors think. Ready, buyer, aim. You make the offer, and then you negotiate. You make the offer, and then you do your due diligence. You make the offer, and then you look for the money. You make the offer, and then you think about it. You should make everybody an offer. Do you know here in Texas, every time you make somebody an offer, you know you actually get four different options? You might want to write them down. Option number one, you can buy a house. <laughs> it's called taking a shot. That's all you're doing is taking a shot. You know what happens if you take enough shots on goal? What do you think happens? Some of them go in, even if you suck. And with practice, a lot of them go in. So yeah, just make an offer. Make 200 offers. Do it tomorrow. Option number two, you can terminate the offer. Do you know that Texas State Promulgated Contract gives the buyer the unilateral right to just rip it up, walk away, no harm, no foul? No risk at all. Why not make 1,000 offers tomorrow while you're at it? Option number three, you can renegotiate the offer. Do you all know that it's much, 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 much easier to renegotiate than it is to negotiate? especially when everybody that simply calls you back is saying they might want to sell the house, i.e. they want to negotiate. Option number four, you can sell the contract itself to somebody else that has money. Notice only one of those four options even required you to have any money and buy a house. Just make offers, give yourself options. <clears throat> Business cards, FISBO, for sale by owner, this is cold calling. People trying to sell their own houses. Why are they trying to sell their own house? Well, maybe they're lazy, maybe they're crazy, maybe they need solutions that realtors don't offer. Hello, right? Mass media, television, radio, billboards, expensive, but effective when you do it with others. Pass referrals, other investors. Sometimes the best way to find a deal is to get other investors to do the deal with you or to find the deal for you. By the way, anybody, uh, Anybody know what I'm doing up here right now? Anybody want to guess what I'm doing up here right now? What do you think I'm doing right now? Yeah, it's called marketing. Marketing. I will guesstimate, based on the number of people we have live and the number of people that we have online, very conservatively, I will guesstimate, I will partner on no less than one, two, three deals with somebody who's listening to me right now sometime over the next 12 months. Very conservatively, an average deal makes 40,000 profit. My share 20 means as a result of the presentation I'm giving right now, I should easily be able to put an extra 20 plus 20 plus 20, an extra $60,000 in my pocket sometime over the next 12 months as a result of the presentation I'm giving right now. Not bad. Better than a poke in the eye with a stick. Don't you all agree? Yeah, and by the way, you can all do exactly the same thing because there's people in this room and there's people in this network that have deals that are looking for money. There's people in this network and there's people in this room that have money that are looking for deals. Some people want fix and flip, some people want buy and hold, some people want short sales, some people want wholesales. Some people want uh, Dallas, some people want uh, San Antonio, some people want Austin, some people want Houston, some people want El Paso. All of the members of this community, and by the way, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them, are all interconnected through a private online network. You know, multiple times a day, multiple times a day, and thousands and thousands and thousands of times over the last decade, the members of this community post their deals, questions, offers, referrals, back and forth over that network. I said earlier, guys, you're not gonna find your deal in the MLS. That's ridiculous. That's the, that's the, 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 the retail marketplace. That's the retail pond. That's the pond with the small fish. Y'all need to fish in the wholesale pond. Okay, that's the pond with the big fish. So then where is the wholesale pond? You're sitting in it. Yes, a large network of real estate investors wholesaling, horse trading, properties back and forth. 
you know, you don't need to go buy, build your buyers list. I already built it for you. I've got over 10,000 people. You can post your deal right tonight, right onto the network and you got all the buyers you ever want. Uh, and then some, welcome to the wholesale marketplace. Okay, realtors, let's have the talk. I love realtors, my friends are realtors, realtors are cool, realtors are swell. Okay, we good? That being said, when realtors go to realtor school and they take all the training that they have to take to become realtors, they watch all the videos, they read all the books, they attend all the classes, not a single class they attend, not a single book they read, not a single video they watch, not a single test question they're given has anything in any way, shape or form whatsoever to do with wholesale real estate. So let me ask you guys a question. Are we here to buy wholesale or are we here to buy retail? Wholesale. So what's the problem? Here's the problem. Every day across the fruited plain, people wake up and they watch one of those stupid flip the house shows and the conversation at home goes down something like this. Honey, honey, we need to become real estate investors. Okay, great, what do we need to do? I don't know, I guess we need to go buy a house. Okay, great, how do we do that? I don't know, I guess we should call a realtor. So now you get this brand new real estate investor who has no idea what they're doing, calling up a realtor who knows absolutely nothing about wholesale real estate. And it's a perfect, if not textbook example of the blind leading the blind and they can both waste incredible amounts of each other's time until somebody figures it out. I'm sorry you're not going to find a deal with the help of a realtor. Realtors sell houses from the MLS, which is the retail market for real estate. You need to buy in the wholesale market, you need to do direct marketing direct to the problem. Now, after we buy wholesale real estate, then we want to resell it. And when you want to resell it, where do you resell it? Right, on the MLS. Now, to resell it, Hire a realtor, right? And get them to sell it for you. That's what realtors are trained to do. Realtors are the best in the world at retail real estate. We don't buy retail, but we certainly want to sell retail. Okay, HUDs and REOs. REO stands for real estate owned bank owned property. Another common rookie mistake. Rookies hear the word uh, foreclosure and they're like, ooh, foreclosure is a deal, foreclosure is a deal. Yeah, uh, no, it's not. A foreclosure is just a house being sold by a banker. Are bankers desperate motivated sellers? No. When a bank wants to sell one of their properties, you know what they do? It's actually kind of smart. They call a realtor. They say, it's called an REO agent. They say, stick it on the MLS, bring me the idiot that pays the most. I don't want that to be any of you. So we don't buy those properties, we buy pre-foreclosures before they go back to the bank. How do you do that? You fish in the wholesale marketplace, you do direct marketing directly to the problems, or here's another idea. Here in Texas on the first Tuesday of the month, rain, shine, holiday or not, everybody that didn't pay their mortgage gets auctioned off at the county courthouse steps at every county courthouse in the state. And you know you can get a list of all the houses going to the auction and you can go knock on their door before the auction and often buy it before the auction for less than it even sells at the auction. Why? Because you're not bidding against 300 other guys. Okay, wholesalers, let's have the talk. I love wholesaling, and there's a lot of wholesaling and horse trading that goes on amongst real estate investors within a network of real estate investors, and that's a good thing. But we always issue a warning to go along with it, and this is the warning. Nobody will love your money more than you. You have to always do your own due diligence. Okay, when a wholesaler sends you a deal, and you're probably, two thirds of you are probably already getting these things. I'm gonna warn you what you're getting. When a wholesaler sends you a deal, and they say, this property is worth $100,000 all fixed up, how much is the property gonna be worth after it's all fixed up? Okay, 80 max. When a wholesaler sends you a deal, and they says this house needs 20,000 in renovations, what is it gonna cost you to renovate? Okay, that would be 40 minimum. When a wholesaler says, ooh, it's your lucky day for a $5,000 non-refundable deposit, this, this lucky deal can be yours, you put down that $5,000 non-refundable deposit, I can guarantee, with about a 19 out of 20 chance that I'm right, because I've been doing this for a long time, you will be losing a lot of money, well beyond the 5,000 that you got started with. It is fiction, folks. Please do not believe fiction for a minute. When a wholesaler sends me a deal, I briefly look at all the numbers and I immediately throw all the numbers in the trash. And then I run my own numbers. Well, the only, the only reason I even looked at the numbers before I threw them in the trash 
because I kind of want to know how much they were lying to me when I compare it to my own numbers, the real numbers. So I'm going to use some strong words because I obviously feel very, very strongly about this. Look, it would be really, really stupid to ever buy real estate, right? From somebody selling you real estate based on the information about the real estate being provided to you by the person selling the real estate to you or anybody they refer you to. That would be really dumb. Don't do that. I said earlier, and, and this is like one of the most common rookie mistakes. All the rookies do this. Uh, and, and I said earlier, look, you know, you know, your first deal is your most important deal. And that's true, right? And, but if you lose money on your very first deal, man, at the end of that deal, 100% of your real estate investing experience will have been bad. You'll probably never come back for more. So let's just not do that. You have to run your own numbers. You have to do an independent analysis of any deal you consider investing in. If you don't know how to do that, we will teach you how to do that. I don't want anybody here losing money. I don't want you to gamble. If you want to gamble, invest in cryptocurrency, invest in the stock market, legalize gambling. Right now, the problem though with the stock market is insider trading is illegal. When it comes to real estate investing, insider trading is advised. Do not invest in real estate unless you absolutely know and can prove with you know, independently resourced data that the investment you're investing in is worth much more than you're, you're paying for it before you even buy it. Okay, that's how we make money, on the buy, not on the sell, on the buy. Okay, bird dogs, Craigslist, social media, friends, family, et cetera. Why so many different marketing methods? Well, would you rather fish with a hook? Or would you rather fish with a net? You need to learn how to fish with a net. And the reason is because this business is a numbers game. And now I'm going to teach you the numbers. I'm going to teach you something right now that it took me two years of hard work in the trenches to figure out. By 2005, I had been a real estate investor for two years. And I, I, I calculated that I generated about 400 leads in my first two years. That means I'm looking at a deal every couple of days. And then I did the math. And here's what I, what I figured out. As a rookie, on average, for every $100 I spent in paid marketing, things like direct mail, I got one qualified motivated seller. As a rookie, on average, for every three hours I spent on personal marketing, things like driving for dollars, I got one qualified motivated seller. Lead. Then I discovered very conservatively, as a rookie, on average, for every 20 leads I got, I made at least $20,000 net profit on a deal. So let me do the math for you. That means on, as a rookie, every time I uh, drove around for 60 hours, I made at least $20,000 net profit. That means as a rookie, every time I sent out $2,000 in direct mail, I made at least $20,000 net profit. Spend $2,000, make $20. Spend $2,000, make $20. Spend $4,000, make $40. Spend $8,000, make $80. Spend $16,000, make $160. Spend $32,000. You don't have to spend it all at once, by the way make 320,000 net profit. Are you starting to like the numbers? It took me two years to figure that out, two years. But what I realized two years into this is, holy cow, this whole business is just a numbers game. And now I know the numbers. And after I realized this, I started to think about my business in a very different way. I now think of my business like it's a little black box. And we'll call that little black box a marketing machine. And the way that little black box works is every time I stick $100 worth of marketing in one end, eventually $1,000 worth of net profit pops out the other end. Now, if you had a little black box and every time you shoved a $100 bill in one end, a $1,000 bill popped out the other end, how many dollars would you stick in the box? All of them. Yeah, all of them. And I started spending money like a drunken sailor. I started spending thousands of dollars a month, and then I started spending tens of thousands of dollars a month. And today, today, on some months, I spend as much as $100,000 a month, a month on marketing. I have two full-time employees, and all they do is spend as much money as they can on advertising every month. One guy spends and buys all the ads, the other guy just does all the analytics, counts, counts of how effective it's working, and puts more money in where it works. Yeah, once you realize this business is a numbers game, and once you know the numbers, then it's on. It is just on. Sometime later, I actually wrote a book on investing in real estate. We're not selling any books tonight, but I will repeat something I said earlier. There is nothing that you are trying to do. There's absolutely nothing 
that you are trying to figure out that I and other people haven't done and figured out? What is the shortcut copy stuff that's been figured out? Okay, so we're right at the halfway point in this presentation. And I said at the beginning of this presentation, my job is to make you all into educated and contributing members of this community. Uh, and we do want you to be educated and contributing. Uh, and I'll tell you why. You know, we do these meetings all over Texas, and you know, we always have a lot of new people that come to the, uh, the live meetings, and we call the new people tourists, right? Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's like, honey, let's go check out the Rhea, right? And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we figured out something a long time ago, and that is that nobody makes any money being a tourist. We, we, we don't want people just checking out. We want people to be active, buying, selling, partnering, lending, right, trading. That, that, that's where all the money gets made. But unfortunately, I also figured out a long time ago, I can't turn somebody into a real estate investor in 45 minutes. If I could figure out how to sprinkle pixie dust on everybody's head and turn them into real estate investors in 45 minutes, yeah, that would be awesome. I don't know how to do that, but I can and I have on numerous occasions turned people into real estate investors over a period of 24 hours. Or maybe it would be more accurate to say 24 hours spread out over three days, giving me the time to get through all the nitty gritty detail of how to actually make money as a real estate investor. So something we do here at the RIA is the RIA sponsors the Texas Real Estate Investing Workshop I teach this workshop myself. This is 100% Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas. 12 different strategies, you have to know them all, and we teach them all, all 65 marketing methods, even the closes, I talked about those before, I'm gonna demonstrate that in just a minute. You can learn how you can partner with me and other local experts, Now you can access our funding to fund your deals. We have over a thousand private money lenders in this network. Private money is much cheaper, much faster, much better in every way than hard money or any other kind of money. Uh, thousands, and I mean thousands, thousands of successful Texas real estate investors have launched their investing careers at this workshop, The Real Deal, Texans Teach and Texans How to Invest in Texas. So we're doing the Texas tour, I mentioned that before, and it comes with the Texas Starter Kit. Uh, pick the date that works for you and come and join us. Oh, another announcement I also wanted to make. This is uh, another thing coming up. Um, just out of curiosity, no right or wrong answer. How many of you are interested in commercial real estate? Let's do a little poll of the audience. Commercial real estate? Okay, at least almost half. Okay, so commercial is different. We have a whole different part of Texas RIAs that focuses on commercial. And um, obviously commercial deals are multi-million dollar deals. And uh, the way you find them and negotiate them, there's some differences. Most of the strategies are actually the same, but the biggest difference is they're the money, right? You know, like buying an apartment building, it's $10 million. So the question is, how do you buy a $10 million apartment building? Like if you're a rookie, like just getting started. Well, how do you do that? You actually go out and get a $7 million loan. Now, that's actually the easy part. You don't have to qualify for a $7 million loan. It's not based on you or your job, or your credit or your income. It's actually based on the property itself. In fact, most of these loans are even non-recourse loans. It's not depending on you, it, it, you're not on the hook for the loan. The property is. Now, then how do you get the $7 million loan? Well, this is the tricky part. You have to put $3 million of cash down. So where do you get $3 million of cash down? Well, you would raise it. Typically you'd get, for example, 60 investors to each invest $50,000 a piece. Now you got $3 million of cash down. But when you're pooling millions of dollars from multiple investors, you're creating what the government calls a security. And how that money is raised is regulated by this Securities and Exchange Commission. And if you don't follow the rules, you literally can go to jail, like Martha Stewart go to jail. Like if I just put a picture of an apartment building up here and said, who wants to invest in my apartment building? I would be selling securities without a license. I could literally go to jail for doing that. And I see people actually doing that on Facebook and they don't even know. And you really want to invest in people who don't even know that they're breaking serious laws right, right on Facebook and it's crazy. Well, anyway, we have something within Texas Rea called the Canis Major Incubator. It's a commercial group within the, the, the Texas Rea is over a thousand members and we can fund multi-million dollar deals quickly. And we're doing something very, very unique and very, very special. Texas RIAs is hosting the Texas Commercial Expo. As a personal favor to me, 
I've invited several multimillionaire commercial real estate investors from across the state of Texas to come together and to teach at an expo. All different asset classes, apartment buildings, medical office buildings, strip malls, uh, land development, RV parks, mobile home parks. You wanna learn commercial? There's not very, it's, it's extremely rare, right? To get a whole bunch of Texas multimillionaire commercial investors to actually agree to bring people behind the curtains and to teach them what they do. So there's never been something exactly like this before. It's the commercial expo. Um, there's some groups out there that do apartment buildings, but we don't just do apartment buildings. We do all commercial real estate of all the different asset classes. And if you would like to go behind the curtains and see how it actually works, we have an expo coming up on September 9, 10, and 11. And if you get the, uh, the, uh, the starter kit, this, this is also included in the starter kit. Now, I will say one thing here. Treat the expo as a part two workshop. What does that mean? I'm, I, I, a lot of people that come to the residential workshop are newbies, right? Just getting started. Some, some are experienced. They're just coming to learn some of the advanced strategies. But everybody that comes to the commercial workshop, I will have expected that you will have already attended the residential workshop or you're already an experienced investor. So if you're just getting started, great. Come to the residential workshop and then come to the commercial workshop. If you're already an experienced investor, you're, you can come right to the uh, commercial workshop. That's completely up to you. But that's on September 9th, 10th, and 11th. For those of you that said you're interested in commercial, you definitely don't want to miss it because there's never been something exactly like this very, very unique event. So uh, that's also part of the starter kit. The, the commercial expo is statewide and it's online only. And the reason is I've got these multimillionaires all over the state. I, I, I can't get them to come to one place at one time, but I have gotten them all to commit to doing two hour blocks on, on a Zoom show statewide. Okay, so we talked about fear, cross that one out. We talked about marketing, finding deals, cross that out. Now let's get to the good stuff. How do you actually do the deals, doing deals? So marketing check. Let's get into the strategies. All right, strategies. Man, there's so many ways to be a real estate investor. There's 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there, and you can watch videos and read books and go to seminars on how to do short sales, how to do buy and hold mortgage assignments, how to do auction options, how to do referrals, wholesaling, how to do contracts for deeds, how to do lease options. Uh, house swapping, wraparound mortgages, how to do equity partnering, and of course, how to do fix and flip. And you can certainly spend a lot of time and money on all that training and education. In fact, my wife and I have actually spent over $100,000 on training, coaching, seminars, books, tapes, etc. cetera. Uh, most of it was great. Some of it was not great. It all sounded great. But I don't feel bad about spending over $100,000 on our education because we've made many millions of dollars from our education. But I do have a little pet peeve at how most people teach this and how most people get taught this. Because when you look at all 12 strategies, here's the good news, they all work. All of these strategies can make you money investing in real estate. The bad news is that they each only work in unique situations. Each one of these strategies is the solution to a specific situation, problem or situation. But remember what I said earlier, your job one is marketing, finding the deal. So here's a brand new investor looking for his first deal. And he does some marketing and he gener generates a lead. And lead is a name and number of somebody who might want to sell real estate. Well, um, you know, if this guy had gotten the right training, he would have learned how to help that seller solve their problem by doing something called a wraparound mortgage. That's the solution to that lead, that seller's problem. But that's not the training he got. He just went to one of those silly wholesale seminars. All he learned how to do is wholesaling. So he's looking for a wholesale deal, but he didn't find a wholesale deal. He found a wrap deal. Doesn't know how to do a wrap, so he can't make any money on that lead and can't help that seller. So what does he do? He does some more marketing. And he generates another lead. Now, if he only knew how to do an, a mortgage assignment, he could help somebody solve the problem and get himself paid. But again, he doesn't know how to do a mortgage assignment because all he learned how to do is wholesaling. So he's still looking for a wholesale deal, but he didn't find a wholesale deal, found a mortgage assignment deal. So can't do anything there, so what does he do? He does some more marketing, and, and now he generates another lead. Now, if he only knew how to do an auction option, he could solve a big problem and get himself a big check. But again, he doesn't know how to do an auction option because all he ever learned how to do was wholesaling, and he's still looking for a wholesale deal. 
are you starting to see the problem? Here's the problem, and this is another huge rookie mistake. There's 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there that teach people how to get started investing in real estate. And what they pretty much all do is they say, you need to get started by learning one strategy and this is the best one. No, this is the best one. No, this is the best one. Well, whatever, you pick one, learn that strategy, make money on that strategy, and then after you learn how to make money on that strategy, then maybe later on you can learn some other strategy. Sounds pretty good, feels pretty good, but forgive my language when I say this, that is a completely ass backwards way to go about this. Saying that you need to get started by learning one strategy, learn how to make money on one strategy before you learn the other strategy, that's kind of like saying you need to go to Las Vegas and learn how to bet on one number on the roulette wheel. And after you make enough money betting over and over and over again on that one number on the roulette wheel, then later on maybe you can learn how the other numbers work. Well, that's ridiculous. And yet that's how 95% of real estate investors get started investing in real estate. And is it no surprise that 95% of real estate investors give up before they ever get going investing in real estate? This is where, and, and probably 99% of wholesalers. So let's talk about wholesaling. There's nothing wrong with wholesaling. Wholesaling is one of the 12 strategies that I use and that I teach. There's nothing wrong with it. The only, in fact, it's the easiest one to teach. But the problem with wholesaling is it's actually the hardest one to do that on average makes the least amount of money. So when I hear somebody say, and this is like a common rookie mistake, I'm going to get started by wholesaling. Here's how my brain translates that. I'm going to focus my time and money doing the hardest thing there is to do that makes the least amount of money. And I know from my experience that about 99 out of 100 people that get started with that plan give up before they ever get going. Because if you're doing the hardest thing to do that makes on average the least amount of money per hour time put into it, you're going to give up before you ever get going. How many of you have read the book, The Millionaire Wholesaler? Yeah, it's never been written, okay? And it never will be, okay? Because it's the hardest thing to do that makes the least amount of money. So I'm gonna show you how the top 5% of real estate investors do it. This is how I do it, and this is how I'm going to teach you how to do it as well. What I do is I bet on all of the numbers on the wheel, and then I spin the wheel a lot. What do I mean by I bet on all the numbers on the wheel? I use all 12 strategies. Why not learn all 12 ways to fill out a contract? Why not learn all 12 ways to solve a problem? Spend time and money, it's called marketing, to get somebody with a problem to call you if there's a way to help them and solve the problem and get paid. You need to help them and solve the problem and get paid. And once you know all 12 strategies, we have a solution for every problem that exists. There is no exception. Motivated sellers, non-motivated sellers, free and clear, hopelessly underwater. We can help them solve the problem and get paid. And that's betting on all the numbers on the wheel. And then what do you want to do next? You want to spin the wheel a lot. What does that mean? Do a lot of marketing and look at a lot of deals. Take a lot of shots on goal. If you take a lot of shots on goal, some of them are going to go in, even if you suck. And with practice, a lot of them go in. This is what the top 5% of investors do. My advice, play to be in the top 5% or don't bother because they make all the money. So how do you do that? You got to know all the strategies. Now let me teach you about some strategies. Actually, first I'm going to tell you another quick story. This was my first big deal. After I was a real estate investor for just over two years, I flipped this house and actually made 291,000 net profit, pretty good profit flipping this house. But the more interesting part of the story is I was actually the eighth investor at bat. So what does that mean? It means seven other real estate investors looked at this deal before me and passed on the deal. How's that possible? How could seven different real estate investors pass on a deal, on an opportunity to make almost $300,000 on a deal? How could that happen? Well, I'm going to tell you that's not just possible. It's typical. Let me tell you the rest of the story. First investor walks into this house and says, I'd love to buy your house. Your house is underwater. You owe more money than the house is worth. You can't even afford to sell me the house. Second investor walks into this house and said, I'd love to buy your house, but you're in bankruptcy. I can't buy a house from somebody in bankruptcy. Third investor walks into this house and says, well, I can help you avoid foreclosure by doing something called a short sale, but I can't do that while you're in bankruptcy. Plus, you have a mid-construction project. I just don't do mid-construction projects. I walked into this house and I said, my, oh my, oh my, you have a lot of big problems here, don't you? Big problem means what? 
big opportunity. You know, it took one, two, three different strategies to solve this guy's problem. I solved the problem, I got the check. My competition was a bunch of one-trick ponies. Most of my competitors are a bunch of one-trick ponies. There's 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there that teach people how to be one-trick ponies. One-trick ponies are annoying, they get in the way at times, but they don't last long. Guys, if you think you're gonna find pretty houses and nice neighborhoods and big discounts just hanging off the trees waiting for you, yeah, you're smoking crack, okay? This is what opportunity looks like, a big bundle of problems with a nice pretty bow around it. I want a house where half the house burned down. I want a house where a meth lab exploded in the garage. I want a house that has mold. I want a house that was flooded. I want a house where someone was murdered in the living room. <laughs> you can make a fortune on a murder house. Yeah, I got one in Austin. It's awesome. You know how you make a fortune? Oh, killing, incredible money. I'll tell you about all the money I made. Yeah, when you, how much does it cost to buy a murder house? 20 cents on the dollar. And you know what happens after you buy a murder house? Everybody walks by the house, you know what? They, that's a murder house. And a year later, everybody walking by the house, something bad happened in that house. And two years later, everybody walking by, somewhere around here, something bad happened. And you know what happens four or five years later? How much is that house? Yeah. You, you, I, I bought a house for 80 grand, it's now worth 400, right? Think about it. I mean, you know, it's, it was a stigma. The stigma goes away. It's like these bars where somebody was uh, shot in a saloon uh, 80 years ago. Now it's a tourist attraction, right? It's like people go there just to, you know, yeah. Problems or opportunities, big problems, big opportunities. I'll tell you another story. One of my students recently bought one of those $150,000 Teslas. He, called, he, he paid cash for it. And he, he calls it his air car. Air car, H-E-I-R, air car. Yeah, somebody died without a will. You know, most people don't have a will, but they did have 42 heirs. And everybody said, no way, man, no way. There is no way you're gonna get 42 people to agree on something, big problem. Well, he rolled up his sleeves and it took a little effort, but eventually he got 42 people to understand and agree that a little bit of something is a whole lot better than a whole lot of nothing. And now he's driving around a $150,000 air car. Problems or opportunities, big problems, big opportunities. Marketing is about finding problems. Strategy is about solving problems. So now let's learn some strategy. First strategy I'm gonna teach you today is wholesaling. Easiest one to teach, might as well teach you right now. How does this work? You simply find a property and get it under contract. How much money does it cost to get a property under contract? Nothing, can you all afford that? I think so. Once you have it under contract, you have it, what's called an equitable interest in the property. The contract itself has value. So you can take that valuable contract and you can sell it to another investor in exchange for a fee. How much is the fee? 500 to 5,000 on a small deal, 10 to 25,000 on an average deal, 25,000 or more on a big deal. And this, my friends, is a no money, no risk strategy. I've discovered it's really hard to lose money when you're not spending or investing any money. And we have nine different ways to do that, nine different strategies to do that. So I like to teach experientially. Let me show you an actual experience. Experiential is through storytelling. This is Kimberly. She went through the same training you guys are going through. She came to the workshop. She had to pay for the workshop, but we, we weren't doing it for free at that time. But at any rate, um, she learned how to do this, and then she went out and did it. And she told me about this deal after it went down. Her mom's visiting her from out of town. So she's in the car with her mom, and her mom's like, Kim, where are we going? Oh, well, mom, we're going to get a house under contract. What? Kim, what are, what are you talking about? You just graduated from college. You don't have any money. You don't have any credit. You don't even have a job. What do you mean you're getting a house under contract? Don't worry, mom. I know what I'm doing. So Kim's mom watched Kim walk into this house and offer the seller 265,000 cash for his house. And he signed the contract right there on the spot. Now, obviously, they talked on the phone ahead of time. Obviously, he was a motivated seller. Kim then took that contract and she posted it out to this network. I told you that before, multiple times a day, thousands and thousands and thousands of times over the last decade, the members of this community post their deals, referrals, questions, offers, resources, back and forth over this network. Kim posted this deal out to the network and guess what? Several other members of the network wanted to buy that contract, that deal from Kim. 
So Kim ended up selling her contract to another member of the RIA for $17,000. Right, so now Kim is a believer. Well, actually, Kim was a believer. Now Kim's mom is a believer. Now, what would Kim have done with the contract had nobody wanted to buy the contract? What, would, what if nobody wanted the contract? What would she have done with the contract? Yep, ripped it up, thrown it away. No harm, no foul. But she didn't need to, did she? Now, who uh, bought the contract? Another member of the network by the name of Tatiana. I know Tatiana pretty well. I'll tell you about Tatiana. Tatiana paid Kim... $17,000 for that contract. It then became Tatiana's contract. Tatiana then bought the house for 265,000 cash. She had the cash. She kept it for six months as a month to month rental. And then after the tennis moved out, she did a renovation and a small addition. And then she sold it after owning it for 12 months. And when she sold it, she made nearly $100,000 of net profit that she only had to pay long-term capital gains taxes no income taxes. Do you think Tatiana was pretty happy that Kim found that deal for her? What do you think? Yes? Yeah. So let me ask you guys a question by a show of hands. How many of you are cash buyers? W wave your hand around if you're a cash buyer. Whew. Okay, let me ask a different question. Um, how much cash do you have to have to make a cash offer? Zero. How much cash do you have to have than to be a cash buyer? Zero. You don't have to have any cash to make a cash offer. You don't have to have any cash to be a cash buyer. You just need to know people with cash. So let me ask you guys another question. Does anybody here know somebody that you could call if you get a smoking hot deal to buy a property for a big discount for cash? Does anybody know somebody you could call in that situation? Who, like who, for example? Yeah, like me. What do you think I'm doing up here? Over here, guys. Right. Hopefully I'm doing something up here, right? I mean, remember me. Yeah, and in fairness, and in fairness, there's hundreds of guys just like me out on that network that would be pleased as punch, right? If you guys got out there, got some properties under contract, and then pitched them back to the group. That's why we want you. That's why we need you. That's why we'll even train you on how to be educated and contributing members of this community. But I can see I've got a challenge ahead of me because I can see we've got some self-limiting beliefs in this room. So I'm gonna try this again. By a show of hands, how many of you are cash buyers? Let's do a little pull. Oh, fantastic. Are you a cash buyer? Yes, okay, we got the hand up. I didn't see your hand up. You went the hand like that. Okay, we got it. I love talking to a room full of cash buyers. And, and the, the network, the, the, the RIA instantly puts people with cash in connection with people with Real estate instantly puts people with deals, contracts, in connection with people with cash. You don't need to go build a buyer's list. That check, it's done. Now let's do something important. I, I build it for you. Easy check. No, no, no time you need it at all on that. You need to do something important. Go find a deal. Go find a deal. Okay. Our next strategy is a bit more complicated and a bit more interesting. It is called buying a property subject to the mortgage. This is buying real estate and owning it with no money and no credit. I am a national expert on this topic. I might possibly be the national expert on this topic. If you've ever heard of this, there's a pretty good probability whoever told you about it learned it from me or learned it from somebody who learned it from me. I've literally taught tens of thousands of people. I'm a nationally recognized expert on this topic. So what does this mean and how does this work? When somebody buys real estate, how does that work? They, they go to a title company and they sign a big stack of documents. Most of the documents are disclaimers and disclosures, but there's two documents in the stack that get signed that actually make the transaction happen. The two documents that make the transaction happen are the deed and the note. The deed and the note. Notice these are two separate instruments, a deed and a note. Whose ever name goes on the deed, that's who owns the property. Whose ever name goes on the note, that's who's responsible for the mortgage. A deed and a note. Now normally it's the same guy. Guy buys a house, his name is on the deed, his name is on the note, he owns the house, he's responsible for the mortgage. That would be normal. He moves into the house, it's his house. 
all the rights and privileges and responsibilities and benefits of home ownership, they're all his. It's his house. At the end of the month, he gets a statement from Bank of America. Says you owe us $1,000 for your mortgage payment. He writes him a check for $1,000. Bank gets a check. Bank's happy. He's happy. Everybody's happy. That's how it works. And then the guy goes on to get married. And well, you know, Texas is a community property state. So after the guy gets married, the wife is added to the deed. Now there's two names on the deed. Look at the tax records. Two names, his and hers, right? But his name is still the only name on the note. Just because somebody's taken on or off the deed, that does not in any way, shape, or form affect the note. And then time goes on and things don't work out and they get a divorce. And in their situation, the wife gets the house in the divorce. So now something kind of interesting has happened. Now her name is the only name left on the deed, but his name is still the only name on the note. So the question is, as long as he keeps sending a check to Bank of America every month, or she starts sending Bank of America a check every month, or a tenant, or a property manager, a neighbor, investor, friend, or family member, or somebody sends Bank of America a check every month, the question is, does Bank of America care who wrote the check? No. There's some dude at Bank of America opening up envelopes, right? It's like, oh, we got a check. It came on time for the right amount, and it cleared. We're good. So if you're all listening to my story so far, I just told you all a story, gave you an example of a woman, of a spouse, about a person that was able to acquire real estate with no money and with no credit. Boom, there it is. I told you I was gonna tell you how to acquire real estate with no money, no credit, there's an example. All right, so here's the really good part. You could all do exactly the same thing and you don't have to get married to do it. Because here in Texas, here's the deal. Any of you, anybody, anybody can go up to any homeowner that has any loan, any mortgage from any lender in any house at any time, and you can make an offer. And the offer any of you can make with any homeowner that has any loan, any mortgage from any lender in any house at any time is this. Here's the offer. I will make the payments on your mortgage for you going forward. Or I will find somebody to make the payments on your mortgage for you going forward. Watch the catch. The catch is you simply have to hand the deed, which is ownership of the property to me. It is called buying a property subject to the existing mortgage. You can do this with any homeowner that has any loan from any lender on any house at any time. And the only person on this planet that has to agree to this transaction is the person whose name is on the deed, the owner of the house, not the bank. The bank has absolutely no say in this. It's actually federally regulated by the 1982 Garden St. Germain Act. Anybody can deed their house to anybody they want. That's their business. Anybody can pay somebody else's mortgage if they want to. So if you're listening to me closely, here's what you just heard me say. You can buy any house in Texas from any homeowner in Texas that has any loan from any lender, and you can buy that person's house at any time, and you can buy that person's house even with no money and even with no credit by simply offering to take over the payment on their mortgage or even offering to find somebody to take over the payment on their mortgage in exchange for them simply handing the deed, which is ownership of the property to you. And once you learn how to buy real estate with no money and with no credit, then how many houses can you buy? All of them. And how many do you want? All of them. Yeah, guys, when somebody's in financial distress, here's what you need to understand, right? They got a house and they got a mortgage. Is the house the problem? Or is the mortgage the problem? Yeah, owning a house is never a problem. Being responsible for a mortgage, right? And when you're in financial distress, that's a big problem. If you solve the problem by taking over the payments or finding somebody to take over the payments, if you solve the problem in exchange for solving the problem, you ask them to hand the deed, which is ownership to the property to you. So it's simply agreeing to pay a seller's mortgage going forward in exchange for a transfer of ownership, the deed. Now, once somebody hands you their deed, you now own the property. You can do whatever you want with it. You can renovate it and retail sell it to somebody else. You can wrap it, assign it, you can keep it as a rental property, you can keep it as your own homestead if you'd like. I've helped many of my friends here in Texas buy their very own homestead with this little or no money, no credit needed strategy. How much money can you make? Well, there's a lot of ways to make a lot of money when you're buying houses with no money and no credit. Small flip, at least $10,000, typically a lot more, and this is another little or no money little or no risk strategy. Let me show you an example of a deal. 
This is one of the $20 million worth of houses that I own here in Texas. Now, like I said before, if I wanted to buy $20 million worth of houses traditionally, I'd have to put down 20% every time I bought a house. I'd have to be a multi-multi-millionaire just to become a millionaire. Well, I wasn't a multi-millionaire or any, even a millionaire when I started investing in real estate. So how was I able to accumulate this portfolio of rental properties? Well, most of these properties were bought using this technique, subject to. So let me tell you about this deal. A woman owned this house worth 150,000. She only owed 110,000 on the mortgage. So this house has $40,000 of equity. She had the house rented out for $1,600 a month rent. The mortgage payment, including tax and insurance, is $1,100 a month. So this house is generating $500 a month of gross cash flow. This should have, could have, and would have been a perfect rental property except for one major problem. This woman had lost her job. She was continuing to collect the rent because she was living off of the rent, but she stopped paying the mortgage. Four days, it's always four days, four days before the first Tuesday of the month when the bank was gonna foreclose on her, I knocked on her door. Can I help you? I am here to help you. But what can you do? There's no time. They're going to foreclose on me. How can you help me? There's no time. They're going to foreclose on me. What can you do? They're going to foreclose on me. How can you help me? Here's what I can do. I can stop the foreclosure. I can reinstate your loan. I can catch up your mortgage payments. I can make your mortgage payments for you going forward, and I can even repair all your credit. Well, that's amazing. Watch the catch. You simply have to hand the deed which is ownership of the property to me. And she said deal. Why did she say deal? Because of what I told her next. Because, you know, she wasn't just getting, uh, 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 losing the house, right? She was gonna get a little bonus to go along with it, a bonus called a foreclosure. And I'm gonna tell you, you don't want a foreclosure. And I told her, you don't want a foreclosure. A foreclosure is the atomic bomb of credit hits. It's the big one. It's the beginning of a 10-year nightmare. It starts with the sheriff and his deputies dragging you and your family and all of your possessions to the curb in front of your friends and neighbors. It's 10 years of dealing with the IRS potentially garnishing your wages to collect on a 1099 that could be issued against you for up to the full value of, of the loan. It's 10 years of having the lender potentially file a deficiency judgment lawsuit against you for up to the full value of the home. It's 10 years of, of having creditors calling you, hounding you day and night to collect on the judgment from the lawsuit. It's 10 years of not being able to buy another home, not being able to buy a car, not being able to get a credit card, not being able to open certain bank accounts or even rent certain apartments or even get certain jobs. Okay. It's in, a, in other words, it's a bullet to the head and nobody wants all that. And I stopped all of that from happening to her. And she was thrilled. And the bank was thrilled. They didn't want the house back. They just wanted their money. So I gave them their money. And the tenants were thrilled. They didn't want to get kicked out of the house. They just wanted to keep renting the house. So I let them keep renting it for me. But mostly, I was thrilled. Because for $4,500, which is what it cost me to reinstate that loan, I now own this beautiful $150,000 house. Came with a loan. Came with $40,000 of equity. All mine. Came with tenants. Paid me $1,600 a month rent. After I pay Bank of America $1,100, I put $500 back in my bank account. And if you think that's cool, my wife and I own about $20 million worth of these properties. Some of them took small amounts of money like this. Most of them honestly took a little more money than this. Some of them took no money at all. So how many of you would like me to walk you step by step by step through how to do this deal? Let's do a quick poll of the audience. All right, we're all out of time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being obnoxious, aren't I? So we're almost out of time. We're almost done. So, but I'm going to keep going. You want to, you want to learn the rest? I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. I, I love this deal. I do. Obviously, this is one of the twelve strategies. I say you don't learn this stuff on HGTV. So, but I'll bet you haven't figured out why I love this so much. Some of you are like, oh, you're making five hundred a month. Yeah, that, that's not it. Five hundred dollars is not going to affect my life or my lifestyle in in any way. That's not it. What what I love about this is by doing this over and over and over again, my wife and I were able to accumulate a portfolio that's now worth $20 million of houses. 
In fact, it's been a pretty good couple of years. Just within the last year, my portfolio went up in value by 30%. Just within the last year, we became more than $5 million richer from having done this thing over and over again, this thing that took little or no money and no credit. That's what I love about this. This is the strategy that allows anybody, regardless of how much money or credit that they have, to become multi, multi, multi millionaires. That's what I love about it. And when I realized the wealth potential of this, I actually made one additional tweak to this strategy. I no longer buy these houses in my name. In fact, I no longer buy these houses in my company's name. Now when I buy these houses, I prefer to buy them in my IRA. How many of you were aware that you could do this transaction with your IRA? Okay, for the rest of you, you know you can do this transaction with your IRA. Yeah, one of the co-sponsors of Texas REAs is a company based right here in Texas. Tex Texas Quest Trust IRA. Um, fastest growing self-directed IRA company in the country. Come to the workshop. They can set it up so you can do it with your IRA. Um, so what happens when my IRA does this deal? Well, my IRA issues the $4,500 reinstatement fee to Bank of America. The deed, title, ownership of the property transfers to my IRA. Every month, the property manager deposits $1,600 of rent into the IRA. Every month, the IRA automatically issues a check for $1,100 to pay the mortgage back to Bank of America, and $500 goes back into the IRA. But that's not the good part. So then what's the good part? Over the next 25 years, this property will double in value. And it'll double again. And even with very conservative numbers, it'll almost double a third time. Something interesting happens to the loan on this property over the next 25 years. What happens to the loan? It's completely paid off by the tenants. Thank you very much, tenants. In other words, every time my IRA does this deal, my IRA ultimately ends up owning an asset worth about a million bucks that by then I own free and clear. And because my IRA is also a Roth IRA, when I sell that asset in retirement, 100% of the proceeds are tax-free. Tax did you all just see what I did? I just showed you how to turn a $4,500 IRA into $1 million tax-free doing one deal, one time. Helping a woman out of a horrible situation, helping a bank not have to take a property back they didn't want back, right? helping tenants stay in a house they wanted to stay in, all that just doing it once. The average retired person at the age of 65 has a net worth of $62,000. It's pathetic. If you just did this one deal one time in your life, you would be 25 times richer than the average retired person just doing it once. But I'll tell you something else I've observed. I've never seen somebody do this deal once. 95% of the people will never do this deal. And 100% of the people that do it once, then what do they do? Then they do it again. And then they do it again. And then they do it again and again and again. And 19 years later, they find themselves standing in front of a room talking about all the times they did it. So one more time, how many of you would like me to walk you step by step by step through how to do this deal? Okay, I'm gonna step you step by step by step through how to find this deal, how to get it under contract, right? How to close it, which contract to use, which attorney and title company to close it at. I'm gonna go through all the steps to, to, to do this deal. But it's gonna take about three days, so we're gonna to have to finish this at the workshop. There we are. And we're not just gonna teach you that one strategy, although it's pretty cool. I'm also gonna teach you the other 11 strategies that you've also never heard about before. Learn how you can renovate houses for free, buy houses even if you can't get loans from banks, buy houses that are even worth le uh, less than, than the amount owed on them. Uh, 12 different strategies, 65 marketing methods, 10 different closes. I just demonstrated a close. That was called the atomic bomb close. That's literally the words I said, and she gave me the deed. I got somebody to give me that house, right? It cost me nothing, no credit. Well, it cost me $4,500 and no credit. So uh, yeah, pretty incredible deal. That's a close. I'm gonna teach you all 10 closes. Uh, and uh, that is all part of the Texas Starter Kit. So um, you got the QR code before. Uh, pick the city and location. 
Um, I do want to mention the starter kit real quick. Um, when you get the starter kit, obviously the starter kit comes with a registration for the workshop, but there's also some other goodies in the starter kit. There's a training program in the starter kit. There's a money resource guide, where to get money in Texas uh, in the starter kit. There's a little business plan generator that's pretty cool. Everybody's different. Some of you want to do this full-time, part-time, active, passive, commercial, residential. Some of you are looking to generate income. Some of you are looking to build wealth or some combination. Um, so within the starter kit, you take a little survey, just kind of say what you're trying to accomplish, and then you push a button, it generates a business plan for you. So for you, you need to do this, right? And then come to the workshop, I'll teach you how to implement it. And then the last step of the uh, starter kit is um, we have an online network uh, and uh, thousands and thousands of people, that's where you can interact with me, all the buyers, uh, the lenders, ask questions, uh, you know, get support on an ongoing basis. Um, so make sure you go all the way to the end. In fact, Olivia, can I ask you to help me a minute? I, I see you're holding one of our posters. I wanna, uh, can you hold that up for, for the audience for a minute? So I am uh, an inventor. I've actually invented a number of different things and technologies, and I wanna show you a little, uh, another one of my inventions. This is called the, the Blueprint. Now, where did this come from? What is this all about? Um, look, I figured out a long time ago, real estate investing is actually not that complicated. Okay, I went to engineering school. That was complicated. I had to take calculus and calculus two and calculus three, and by the time I took calculus three, I had to remember calculus one and two. Really complicated. I've never had to solve a differential equation to flip a house, not that complicated. But unlike engineering and calculus that is uh, a, a mile deep, the thing about real estate is a mile wide. It's a million little details. Learning real estate is more like learning a language than, than learning a skill. But you can't learn a language from reading a book. And that's why real estate books are not all that helpful. I mean, it's like learning how to speak Spanish. You can read 100 books on how to speak Spanish. You're not gonna learn how to speak Spanish. You're gonna learn how to count to 10. That's how far I got. There's only one way to learn Spanish. What is that? Immersion, yeah. You get somebody to strap a parachute on your butt, toss you out of an airplane in the middle of Spain. You wanna eat or go to the bathroom, you're gonna learn Spanish. You gotta hear things two, three, five, 10, 20 times, right? And it's not complicated, it's just a lot of details. And that's the th same thing with real estate. It's not complicated, there's just a bazillion details. And it was not until I joined the local real estate investor association, got active within the community and started to hear things two, three, five, 10, 20 times that I picked up enough of the details to actually be, be able to do it myself. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to put it all on a, on a blueprint so this is something I, I invented. I've got all of the different uh, strategies, all the different marketing closes, all the different sales and negotiating techniques, all the different operations, power teams, corporate structures, all the different finance uh, uh, strategies, all the different analysis and due diligence steps. Um, I put them all in this chart, the 273 things, details you need to know to be a real estate investor. And do we have some of these? Did we bring some of these? We did, okay, so I'll tell you what, uh, as a bribe, at the end of the starter kit, it will invite you to join the online forum, which you definitely want to do, uh, because that's how you can interact with me, and that's your buyer's list, that's how you can get money and resource and ask questions anyway. Uh, if you join the private Facebook group, uh, then, uh, and, and show them outside, you know, show them your phone, show them you're a member, uh, they'll give you a poster. So we brought some of these posters with us, you definitely want to take advantage of that. So uh, this is the tour, pick the date that works for you and don't forget we also have the expo coming up. Oh, one more quick question for the audience. Um, how many of you would like to come live? How many want to come live? Okay, how many want to come online? How many want to come online? Okay, I'd say 80, 20, no problem. Okay, we're doing live and online uh, you, or you can do a combination if, you, if, if that's easier. So take a picture or go to the link or, uh, oops, there we go. If you're online, click on the link in the comments below. And that's how you get the starter kit. Okay, a couple of other little business keeping things here, uh, housekeeping. Uh, people always ask, hey, do you have copies of your presentations? Yes, we do. We post them on our social media. Uh, we are on Instagram. We are on Facebook. Look, just look for Texas Rias. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, hundreds of videos. You want all the videos? Uh, just go to Texas Rias on the YouTube. 
uh, channel. Also check out the Houses Flipping People, a separate YouTube channel. Uh, that's pretty cool as well. Um, I already talked about the starter kit. Um, the event itself, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 24 hours over three days. I will say we're going to wait it towards Friday, Saturday. What does that mean? We start every morning, 9 a.m. sharp. Try to get there at 8.30. From 8.30 to 9, we're going to be doing studies, case studies and, and, and examples. I start speaking at 9. We will go late on Friday, late on Saturday, so we can end early on Sunday. So what is late? I don't know, maybe 7.30. Depends on you uh, and how many questions you ask, uh, et cetera. Um, Please show up on time, bring a notebook, be prepared to fill the entire notebook with notes, ask questions, interact. I'm not here to entertain you, I'm literally here to change your life. If you want your life changed, come to the event. If you're just gonna goof off, not pay attention, or, or, or not interact, then just don't, don't come, just don't bother, okay? And, and if you're coming on the Zoom, turn on your camera, ask questions, pay attention. If you're just gonna, you know, if you're just looking for entertainment, my suggestion is go watch a Netflix marathon instead, okay? You can probably polish off six seasons of a great show in a weekend, right? As in, or you can come to the workshop and, and change your life. Okay, a few questions real quick. How much experience do I need? I expect at the, as a, 75% of the people that come to the residential workshop are rookies. 25% are experienced investors that are coming to learn some of the more advanced strategies. On the commercial workshop, I said, I expect everybody that comes to the commercial workshop to either have already attended a residential workshop or to already be an experienced investor. Can I bring a significant other? Highly recommend that you do. Drag them by force if necessary. And, I, and, and here's the thing, I'm just, I'm gonna tell you, so don't, don't I'm, I'm gonna tell you and then I'm gonna tell you and then, I, then I'm gonna say I told you so. I've done this before. When people come to the workshop and they don't drag their significant other with them, here's what happens. It's like it always happens. They learn how to invest in real estate. They go find a deal. They go home and they say, honey, we're buying a house. And what do you think honey's going to say at that point? Are you nuts? Is that even legal? No, you're going to lose money, blah, 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 blah. I'm just telling you for your own good. Drag them to the workshop. Even if they're not interested, I'm going to make it interesting. I've had endless situations where people uninterested in real estate came to the workshop and then they got so excited, they were the ones to pick up the ball and run with it. But even if they just kind of learn a little bit, they're gonna be much more supportive, right, when you're ready to do a deal. Uh, what if the event is rescheduled? Highly doubt that that could happen, but I'll tell you what we'll do. A day or two before the workshop you register for, we will call, text, or email you, okay, to RSVP you. We want to know how many people are coming live. We want to know how many people are coming online. The, the live event, we have lunches brought in. We have tables. It's much more spread out than it is in here, so you're not going to be packed in like we are here. Um, but we need to know how many people are live, how many tables, how many lunches, et cetera. Um, so let us know. If for some reason you have a scheduling conflict, then at that time you can reschedule, right? Even if, uh, uh, and, and by the way, we're about to start charging for the event again. If you're locked in now, you can reschedule and, and, and still get in without having to pay. So that's a pretty good deal too. Um, how do I know this is the real deal? My best advice is ask somebody else that's actually done it. Uh, and seriously, if you want to come join us, come join us right now. It's free, so there's not even any risk to it. If you don't want to join us, I promise I won't be offended. But I will say, whatever you do, do not waste your time and do not waste your money going to what we call these traveling circus road shows. There's these out-of-state people that come into town. They don't know anything about Texas. There's things you can only do in Texas. You can't do in 49 states. There are things that are legal in 49 states that are absolutely not legal in Texas. And if you're doing those things, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Work with local experts. You want to come work with us? Great. Um, and by the way, if you want to see what over a thousand reviews look like, go to that link right there. What is that? I invite everybody that comes to the workshop to give me a review. Write down whatever you thought of the workshop. And then we scan, we actually scan the handwritten reviews and we post every single one of them on the internet for the entire world to read. Now, why would I post every single handwritten review onto the internet for the entire world to read 
no matter what they put on their review. Go look for yourself and you will see why. And what you will see is 99 out of 100 all say the same thing. Oh my gosh, this was literally a life-changing event. In fact, at this event, I'm inviting several people that have come to the workshop in the past, learn how to invest in real estate from scratch to do a property tour. We're gonna to do a little property tour. We're gonna literally have people walking through houses in the middle of the workshop uh, with their cameras, showing how they found the deal, negotiated the deal, financed the deal, questions answered, experiential learning. And I'm gonna tell you right now, some of these people are now multi-millionaires today from having attended this exact workshop. Go see for yourself. Uh, where do I get my tickets? The starter kit, we talked about that. I think there's a place in the starter kit where you can actually enter the, the logistics for the event right into your uh, calendar. I gave you the dates before. There may be an earlier date still available. If you're interested in that, you can register. If it's still available, it'll show up on the starter kit. What if I want more help? I said before, the last part of the starter kit puts you into the private moderated Facebook group. That's where you can interact with me and Olivia and all the other members of the network, ask questions, uh, et cetera. You definitely want to do that as well. Um, and that is basically that, uh, and that is the starter kit. So go ahead and if you haven't done it already, uh, click on the link, go to the link, or if you are online, click on the link below. Uh, and with all that, thank you guys. You all guys, everybody learn a lot today, yes? Did you all learn a lot today, yes? All right. Awesome, guys. Uh, so we look forward to it. I am going to stop the broadcast right now.